Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. This is going to be very casual, so I don't know. Do you need me to tell you when we're officially starting, or can this just be it? This can be it. Well, this can be it. All right, this is it. Uh, so, guys, if you're watching this, we're going to try something a little different. Uh, we usually do community questions during the show, uh, but we're going to try. We're going to we're going to move them to the front. We usually spend like twenty to thirty minutes just shooting the shit before the show, anyways. Uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna answer those community questions now. And we're going to get these up on YouTube. So um, we want to encourage engagement, guys. If you have questions, if you're listening or watching on YouTube, I will scour the YouTube comments. I will go into the thread on Discord. I will check the post on 4 I'll pull questions from there. Uh, and we'll answer as many as we can get in these uh, these pre-show segments. And then we'll record back the regular podcast afterwards. So um, with that in mind, let's just, let's just do it. Uh, Chris Davis, you want to... Put the first question up on the screen. I made overlays for this and everything. Yes. All right. First question. Is from Dingle Dangle Scarecrow, which I'm pretty sure is just Scarecrow in our in our in our chat. But uh, Dingle yeah. Dangle. Dingle Am I supposed to be recording this? No, 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 no. This okay. is just going to go. This, no. is, this is for YouTube. Uh, no need to do any of that. But Dingle Dangle Scarecrow in, in Discord asks... With six years in hindsight, was the PS4 Pro a big deal in the end? Uh, you may recall some concerns surrounding the advent of the upgrade, particularly from one Bradward Simons, uh, regarding fear of missing out due to the potential disparity between the PS Pro and the PS Poor. What do you feel is the legacy of this attempted half-step model? Is a PS5.5 <laughs> in the cards? <laughs> can I, since I was the most vocal, can I uh, let yeah, you know what yeah. I think? For sure. Um, I think it, it set like a horrifying precedent, and we're probably going to see it again. It's funny. I, I would question... argue that the precedent was set well before the PS4 or Pro came out. The yeah. precedent for half stepping models, for taking technology. Like, Bones. I get it. It's one of those things where, you know, technology, like, look at the PS2. Um, and don't get me wrong, I know it's a different comparison. Um, but in its 10 years, we saw multiple models of it. Generally, they got cheaper. Not always. I, I I can't remember. I mean, that was also I don't know, the, they got well, smaller. The PS2, well, how much did the PS2 come out, cost when it came out? Like it was pretty expensive for the time. I think it was. I think it was, I think it was three. Oh, uh, three. Maybe I remember four. it being pretty expensive. No, it was I didn't. Three. I didn't get one right away. But but that's what I'm that's what I'm saying is like I, I and don't get me wrong. I'm playing devil's advocate here. I I would love for all my consoles to cost five dollars. Um, I just know that's not how it is. It, but I think it's one of those things where when they try to stretch out a console being around so long, besides trying to make it modular, like a computer, the only way you can renew that interest is to like put out a new version of it. And it's hard to keep up when you have this hardware that was in reality, when the PS five came out, that's already old hardware. You know what I'm saying? It's not, you can't make something in mass um, and then have the hardware be new. Um, and so by the time you know, a couple of years goes by, that hardware is now very fucking old. Um, and so, it's, so quickly yeah. it does. And so it's I, I get that it's hard to keep up with other things. And if some other console comes out or if some half step comes out, all of a sudden, like, I don't want to say games aren't running well, but they kind of aren't. And so the PS poor, the PS4 original and PS Pro, they they ran very differently. The the PS4 Pro ran games so much better. Um, yeah. And so I'm, while I'm not trying to argue for, oh, we need more of this, um, I would always love modular consoles. I think that would be it just makes It just makes sense from like a business standpoint and like a development standpoint, I suppose. I that don't think it makes sense from a development standpoint. I think, I mean, I, well, I think I mean, what, ha what happens letting, is people are... Technology becomes are, are developing for like whatever the most like expensive console is out there 
but they have to make it run, you know, like, like, uh, like, uh, what's a big, uh, ge- game that comes out soon? Uh, that's like multi-platform. No, uh, that's multi-platform. multi-platform. Uh, uh, Call of Duty. Like, uh, huh? Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Call sure. Co- why not? Like, well, Call of Duty is weird. Um, you know, like the next, uh, big, uh, Assassin's Creed or something. I don't, I don't Ballista know. Protocol. Like, that yeah. that has to um sorry let me put my other headphone in I, I couldn't hear that he said Callisto that, protocol Callisto uh, that's not that that's kind of budge looking okay uh, okay uh, right you you are so what, what what I'm saying is is like yeah they're designing it to run well on a PS5 but it still has to run on an Xbox One true base model yeah you know and and. <laughs> We are I talking, just, like, at some point, it's like... It's like I liked when consoles were one thing and developers just got got better at making games for that console because they didn't have this, like, much more powerful hardware that they could, like, use that as the base well, and, and leave, like, the weaker versions in the dust. That's why, it's, you it know... It makes total the, sense. You, your, your argument makes total sense, and I'm not sitting here trying to argue against that, but, but technology has be, moved so quickly... And at an increasing rate, like I don't, it, it, it does. I don't, th- I, it I don't think the you're, the you're, rate you're at which technology is advancing has always been like super fast. I don't think like the modern always, jumps are the reason that the hardware has to like jump. It's all, dude. It's always been fast. It's it's always been fast, but like it gets incrementally more fast as to like like the jump, like the time it took to go from the PS2 to P, to the PS3. Like nowadays, you could you could probably be ready to make that jump in half the time. And and and, the, and I, again, I'm 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 not sitting here in favor of it because obviously I would prefer to only to have one console last me a full generation as opposed to. Doing these <laughs> I, I don't want to hear steps. you say that, Nick. No, no, uh, no I mean but... just because. No, 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 I mean I get it. J- just because I spent the money and I went out and I got a I got a a, a PlayStation Four Pro or whatever, and I got a PS Five. Like, doesn't mean I don't understand it. I get it. All, but, all I'm saying is that the the. The console that 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 ran Uncharted one was the same one that ran The Last of Us, because right. those developers were developing within the constraints of the console, and they don't have to do that anymore. So, like, what we've had this conversation a million times. I think I think it sucks. Whatever y'all explain the business in, I get it, but like, I still think the lasting effect is that yeah, they're gonna fucking do it again. So that's the yeah, answer to my question. All, but also, question. also uh, the precedent. If you want to talk about the precedent being set, I don't even think gaming consoles were setting the precedent. It's fucking phones are setting the precedent. No, of course it was. Fo- it was phones set the te- present precedent in technology. Sony, like these Sony set the precedent in terms 5. of of. Yeah, no, I know, I know. It's nuts. But but I'm saying the 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 PS Pro set the precedent for consoles, and I think it, that's going to be what we see going forward. Uh, and I don't, I don't like that because, you know, I spend $500 on a PS5 and I, I, I think it should feel like the that's best that console you. can be for a long time because that's now, why now I have a console I, and why I'm not chasing say, graphics cards all the time. One thing I will say is that the PS4 to the PS4 Pro... It almost seems like they justified the existence of that thing because it, it, it ran quieter and cooler than than the, than the original people like you pop you pop in ghost of tsushima and i was literally worried my my hardware yeah. was gonna fucking melt but like the now, ps2 saying, slim also dude, ran quieter again, and and again dude i'm not coming at you saying that, that was the best thing but i'm just saying the good news now is that the ps5 runs quiet as hell like i i will not like if they release a ps5 pro or whatever the the I'm not. I don't feel as compelled to run out and buy one because I don't feel like this thing is melting my entertainment center. I mean, but you will, right? When, when no, it I runs games so. way better, when when games start, you know, not running so well on the base models, and maybe it doesn't look as big and stupid, you'll buy one, and that's fine. Yeah. I'm not judging you, but like this is what I think our new future is going to be, and I think it sucks for the people with the base models. That's all. You're right. You're right, and I don't. And no, I don't think anyone here disagrees with you on that point. I, I do. I do find it interesting. The question was phrased. He sounded like Scarecrow. Sounded like he was under the. He was assuming that this was not going to happen again. That this was a failed experiment, and I don't know where he got that idea. 
because I think this was very much a pretty successful. Uh, I think we're already <laughs> seeing the early signs of this. Yeah, like we're we're also seeing Nintendo, you know, the Switch Pro, the OLED, and all this shit. Like everyone knows, the Switch Pro is 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 coming at some. No, point. I'm I'm saying we're seeing it with the PlayStation Five already. What? We are. Yeah. In what's in what the sense? opposite with the PS Five? Because the PS Five is and... now getting a external uh, drive, an well, that, external that, Blu-ray that drive. Leans... That leans more towards what Nolan wants, where they're making, they're trying to make it modular. Maybe they're trying to make it more modular as opposed to like releasing a whole new I mean, model. I, I, yeah, to to that point, that means hey, if you bought a PS5 digital and you don't want to have to buy a new one, here, just buy this attachment, and now it can be digital, and now it's but, not only digital. But that's what I'm thinking is is go on is that I think Sony is moving in the direction of we're going to discontinue the $500 PS5 that comes with the drive. And if you want to drive, you can buy a PlayStation 5 that's digital only. And your only option for playing a disc is to buy this external drive. I mean, that's I not know, an insane want to concept that to me. That's a, you know, why, why would anyone want to save money? And, you know, if someone is a purely digital person, but they only have the, the more expensive version that has to have the drive, then they're paying for something they're literally never going to use. But if you're a physical person like you're like me, who wants to watch movies and play games off a disc, like if I would have waited three I mean, let's be honest, years we're into di- a generation. We're a, dying, we're a dying breed, Chris Davis. Um, OK, <laughs> all right. We need to move on. That's the, that's the next question. Let's put it up, throw it up on the screen. OK, the next question. Is uh, from the Drunken Merchant. All right, this is more of a hypothetical, a fun question. It says, you are rich and have an empty room in your mansion to fill with cool gaming memorabilia. What would you fill this room with if money was not an issue? So, Nick, just go ahead and look around your room because you do own, like, a five-bedroom, eight-bathroom mansion. I do not live in an eight-bath... Don't... Don't... Don't make people I mean, think I that thought I it was unusual some... that you had eight bathrooms before, you know, five bedrooms, but, you know... This is... This this joke is not working, Chris Davis. I I do not have eight bathrooms. Also, okay. he didn't ask about the bathroom. He asked about a, a a room for gaming memorabilia. I didn't say you were staying in a bathroom right now. Although it could be a very right. nice bathroom, I can't tell from this perspective. Chris I mean, Davis, I like the bougie Nick jokes, but this specific one about bathrooms has run its course. Chris okay. Davis, All right. All right. somebody just answer the question. What's the what do you fill your gaming room with? Your if if money's not an issue. Bookshelves full of games. No, no, I, so I, he did specifically. I didn't put that on the screen, but he did specifically say. And don't just say, don't just say all you know, all the video games in the world. That's boring. I, I thought, mean, I thought, Chris, I thought Brad was going to go into a, a, a tirade here about like all these, like, what you, the figmas and, and shit that. Yeah, but but I mean. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really cool like figurines and stuff out, out there and statues, I guess. But I don't I, I wouldn't I feel like having like a couple is exciting, but having like as many as you want is just like disturbing. I think the reason this is a tough question is because none of us have unlimited money. So we don't really think about that kind of thing. Like for me, it's like one of those things where I buy very few gaming memorabilia like physical objects same um, it has to be, be pretty cool for me to actually want to drop oh, no, money yeah, on for it. sure for sure like uh, there there are very few things that i go out and buy um mainly just because a it's like i don't want to say it's a waste of money um but i mean it's one of those things where it's like okay i'll look at it twice a year otherwise it just kind of sits in a corner um so for, for that, that kind of makes this question difficult to answer just because it's not something i think about i generally don't think about uh gaming memorabilia i don't think about you know, like plushies or whatever. But I think having the money um, is, is yeah, obviously, oh, you have like a big room. Um, so yeah, I would try to think of like bigger things to get like, oh, you know, like a giant Snorlax plushie or, um, you know, something that is like, uh, you know, an uncharted rock climbing wall. Uh, you, you know, something like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of something like big, um, what is an uncharted rock climbing wall? Like a wall that randomly yeah. like explodes or something? Like, no, like yeah. mines. The it, wall? <laughs> it, it, it's a it's a wall with um like a very guided path, and you can't yeah. fall off of it when you start climbing. <laughs> yeah, just like yellow handholds all the way up the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, it, it, 
in all seriousness, like thinking about this question, like if I had, if I, if money wasn't an issue for me, I would probably want to make it i mean i've done what i can with the room that i have which is i i I like having a dedicated gaming space like so i you know i try to make a nice presentable room where i can have my tv and make it kind of fun and put like i have a shelf that has like you know my last of us collector's edition shit and you know just all sorts of collector stuff on there but once i fill that up like that's kind of it like i I don't want to like I don't want to like fill like all the walls. If I if if money wasn't an issue, I'd probably lean more towards turning a room into like a super crazy like VR setup where I could like I don't have where you know walking into the space and getting the VR on and everything wouldn't be kind of such an endeavor. It would just be kind of that's what the room is for. When I want to play VR, I just walk in, put the helmet on, and go. Um, so yeah, I would I would buy like the best VR system on the market and make like a dedicated like walking space where I could I could get crazy. I mean you could do I, that now probably. I, <laughs> yes and I, no. It's, 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 I mean, you have this stuff. So it's one of those things where it's like it's wires are difficult. And I know some of the newer ones that don't have wires or whatever, but it's one of those things where I think having like, you know, one of those um <clears throat> like contraptions that has like either the moving floor or the floor that's like sloped and you mm. kind of slide on it. Um, so that way you can have like in a total experience without having to, uh, you know, worry about, cause I mean, don't get me wrong. Even though my room is quote big, uh, as soon as you have that VR headset on, you can it bump into small. shit real quick. Like it you're constantly worried. Exactly. So I think having like a VR space that is, I wouldn't ever be worried about running into walls or bumping or knocking into something. Um, Are you thinking I about think... those like uh, like at E three they had demo they had booths for them with like the like VR things, but you're also kind of like in a treadmill. Yeah, where you're, like, you, yeah, you, into you it. strap <laughs> into it. Yeah, so you don't have to actually move around. Uh, so you're but like you can, running you're through complete... the woods. Exactly. I, I, I like that concept, but I think that's something that honestly, I mean, once again, that's for that would physically fit in my current room probably, but money is not is the option yeah. there like I, that's this, not a, a good you know thing to spend my money on at the moment here's a quick question um what how long we're we supposed to be doing this and uh should we move on to the next question yeah we well, yes three questions yes. tonight so yeah Until about like, 8 30 oh. so yeah i uh for me it, for my it, part it's it's gonna be uh just a really high-end home theater setup you know like 11.2 surround sound and uh, just a really kick-ass display where I can hang it, you know, people can come out and, yeah. and play games and stuff. Um, as far as memorabilia goes, um, like, it kind of be similar to what I already have. I have a lot of high-resolution uh, game art that's kind of hard to find, um, as well as some official art from, uh, you know, like Bioware and, and EA and a few other places. I do try to deck my walls with as much cool art as I can yeah, in this but- space. Like I've outside got my, of the space, you know, not happening. <laughs> I I don't want to be mean, but I feel like we gave like the most boring answers, and this guy's probably sad about our answers. I uncharted rock well, climbing like, wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, one's, that one's answer, pretty bad out there. No, I mean, I, I just I I I, I, I would make a creative, I would, I, but I would make a your the floor is lava room where the floor is actually lava. How's that for an answer? Maybe I mean. L- Let's, Can you do that? Because there is there an amount of money that I could I could spend on, to actually acquire lava? Maybe I would like transform a room into like since I have unlimited money, maybe it be exactly like a location just like out of that game world that I'm like really in into. Normandy. You know what I, I mean? T- turn yeah, turn so, something around. like that. Something. something like it would be like a replica of the Normandy, sure, or That's something pretty cooler. Rad. That's pretty. I'm trying but, to think uh, of what I, which what space I would want to do. But and you're right. We do need to move on to the not the next question because we got to get started on the actual podcast here soon. So we have one more question tonight. What is it? I think this was the last last minute submission from Zero Skies. He says uh, the trailer for Wild Hearts inspired this question. What would you like to see a classic game series uh, learn from a newer IP of the same genre? Uh, he said he references Monster Hunter, and it sounds like he thinks Monster Hunter is getting a little long on the tooth. Like what? I'm not sure if everybody would. You know what you know what Wild Hearts is, right, Nick? I'm sure we'll talk about on the podcast. I mean, I I I'm going to be totally honest with you. I saw there was an announcement for Wild Hearts, and everybody was getting kind of excited. And then I saw it was like, this is from the Dynasty Warriors. Yes. Uh, We'll talk about it, but yeah, I I mean, have immediately lost interest in it. Understand? It's fine. I'll bring it up on the podcast, I guess. Yes. Um, uh, just just a spoiler for that conversation. Omega Force has made games like this before. 
So, okay. well, we're just having it now. Yeah, the the Tokiden series they've made hunting games before, and those are like they're, they didn't, they've never blown up like Monster Hunter, but they are like fairly fairly well regarded as that type of game. So, yes, they've made mon, mon, uh, Dynasty Warriors games, but they've definitely made hunting games before. So, like with a big budget, maybe like this could be actually something you know, pretty cool. Right, right, right. I mean, if you want I mean, to talk have about... You, have you seen the trailer? I have not. Maybe you haven't. You it. haven't seen the trailer. Because if you've seen the trailer, you wouldn't be all like, Dynasty Warriors is stupid. You'd be like, whoa, this looks cool. Um, I mean, I, yeah. literally my only frame of reference here is Dynasty Warriors and that Zelda uh, uh, Dynasty Warriors clone, which I'm also not really into. So like, Yeah, <laughs> no, you have no idea what this is. Okay, I'll that's watch fine, the trailer. That's fine, that's fine. Maybe watch, watch the trailer. trailer while we're setting up for the podcast. Yeah, and, um... for sure. I can do that. Um, but in the spirit of the question, you want to talk about an, an IP that, that you wish would take inspiration from new, from newer IP? Honestly, we talk a lot about Assassin's Creed being kind of a stagnant franchise, and like they've made some changes, maybe not changes that people are, are really looking for. For me, if I want to talk about changes I'd like to see made to Assassin's Creed, I would like to see it take more inspiration from things like Hitman. <laughs> And like, because I love the lore and the world of Assassin's Creed, but I I also love, love, love the approach to these kinds of like assassination missions that Hitman takes. And that's kind of what I'm secretly waiting for Assassin's Creed to do. You know what I mean? So like, I would love for Assassin's Creed to take cues from that. Um, so I would like to see. Uh, like, like, I mean, I've always wanted like, oh, bring back Front Mission, but make it like Val. Val- Valkyria Chronicles, but that's such mm. like an old reference now because Valkyria Chronicles has been out forever. But but you know, a a lot of classic strategy RPGs are probably coming back, but they're they're just be, still like these kind of grid based things. It would be nice if they were kind of like more like Valkyria Chronicles, sort of fancier strategy games, but still that classic IP would be cool uh, for sure. But, I want to um, see Final Fantasy take inspiration from Final Fantasy IX. What? That's what. That's what I want. <laughs> that is neither a good idea nor the spirit of the question. Ah, I know it's kind of a joke answer. I, mean, I gave the, my. I gave my answer. I mean, the, the problem is with this question is that a lot of classic IPs are classic for what they did back in the day, and a lot of them may sure. just not translate well to modern IP. Well, built. classic can mean a number of things. Like, like I, I said Assassin's Creed. I, I still consider Assassin's Creed to be a modern franchise, but it has a long enough history that you can go back far enough and, and realize that it should be taking cues from newer games. Um, like, like if you want an example for me, I want Square Enix to bring back Parasite Eve and make it like the, the Resident Evil remix. That would... I, I, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, Brett, run, Chris Davis, Brett. <laughs> You motherfucker! Like normally, normally I'd say, "Hey, whatever, that's a, that's fine." But like, you're a noted like Parasite Eve two stan, which was already like Resident Evil back in the day, and that's yeah. probably why you're even thinking about Resident Evil, which is wrong. It's the wrong way to think about it. No, I'm no. not. I'm, I am I not want, advocating for. You. Hey, hey, I really, really like Re- Parasite Eve one. Okay. Parasite do, do Eve not, should not be a survival horror game. It should be an a horror RPG. And Resident Evil's not an RPG. So, I don't know about that. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of what would be the closest analog to a survival horror RPG today? Like is there anything at all like that that you could Wait, that you could that you could draw well, a line? Let's take survival out of there first of all. Sorry, um, hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. A horror RPG. Is there anything RPG? like that these days? Uh, you, you know, the, there there was wasn't there one like announced recently, at, like a Nintendo Direct or like a like a Sony State of Play or something. It, it was like a, it was like a spooky RPG. It looked pretty cool. Um, I mean, probably. What was it but I'm trying to think of something that already exists, like that that we've played. You know what I mean? Like, because so many games, mm-hmm. so many horror games is draw. That stuff you know, exists, especially in like indie space. In the indie space, a lot. But of, nothing like, really exists like Parasite Eve, I suppose. I would just like to see Parasite Eve come back and retain some as many of the elements as possible from the that first game because such a cool idea that just hasn't really been done at all um, since then. Although I f- I feel like if Parasite Eve came out these days, it would it would more closely resemble like modern Final Fantasy. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. from a mechan- you know what I mean? Mechanic, like it'd be an it'd be an yeah. Parasite Eve was cool, not just because it was horror in an RPG, but because it was like you know modern setting, New York City, like like Christmas time. It was just like you'd never seen cool. a game like that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially like not Davis's, Parasite Eve too. I like Chris Davis's answer. Just Parasite Eve, though, just bring back Parasite Eve and Sh- Shadow Hearts yeah. is a horror RPG, and it is there. It is getting a spiritual successor in Penny Blood. Mecca yeah. brought up in chat. There we go. So. There we go. All right. I think that I think that does it for questions tonight, guys. Um, so if you're watching this uh, and you want to ask a question, uh, we're going to try this for a while and see how it goes. We're going to put this up on YouTube. Um, so if you are a YouTube viewer or if you listen to the show, you can go to discord.gg slash four player. You can leave a question there. You can leave a question in the comments um, of uh, either the podcast or this video. I'll check both and uh, I'll pull in any questions that look like they might be fun to answer. So keep that in mind. In the meantime, we're going to we're going to shift gears here and record the uh, the podcast here in just a minute. So if you're watching us live, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. to four player podcast episode 733 it's september 29th 2022 i'm your host nick henderson and i am joined by brad simons hello nolan headstrom hey how's it going everybody and christopher davis good evening and uh we're here to talk about video games per usual um i I just want to mention to anybody who happens to be listening to this podcast on the go uh after the live recording i just want to let everybody know we're trying something a little different we did we we did kind of a little soft launch on this tonight we did we took community questions that we would normally answer in the show and we recorded them as a video in a video format prior to the recording of this podcast so uh we do that because usually we should we shoot the shit for like 30 minutes before we even get serious and start recording the podcast so um Community questions are going to be up on YouTube. So check those out if you're watching at home or listening and you want to submit a question uh, for a future segment. All you have to do is go to discord.gg slash four player or you can leave a comment uh, on our YouTube channel in the, in the comments for this podcast or the other uh, questions video, whatever you want. Uh, and we're just going to see how this goes, see, see what it does for us in terms of time management and production and all that stuff. So um, if you're listening and you want to answer a question, we want to hear from more of you. Get those questions in. Um, I also want to make sure everybody is aware that um, I'm going to be gone for two weeks. And as a result, this is the last podcast we're going to record for two weeks. But uh, we should be doing community streams, community nights, multiplayer nights, whatever you want to call them, um, for the next two weeks. I think we're going to do uh, Grounded next week, probably, is what it's sounding like. You, we're you tweeted it, towards. so I guess we have to now. Nick. I mean, this is what I'm talking the about. Like, I try to law. get. I try to get these conversations going so that I can promote shit. So once I tweet it, it's it's law. So well, uh, you could just say community night. <laughs> but well, that's sure. Yeah, What's sure. That plan grounded, Brad. We had a lot because of because it's October. It. It's October. Spiders are spooky. spooky spiders and ants. They're All spooky right. stuff. Hey, hey, there's two weeks. You can do a phasmophobia stream the following week. That's getting closer. Mm. To Halloween, sure. it works better. Maybe just um, don't tweet anything yet. Fa- Phasmophobia I, just got a brand new map, so l- no, it got multiple, all kinds of shit because it was some huge l- update. But literally yeah. trying to make this, you know, because we always have a lot of people that listen to our show. It's like, oh, I didn't know y'all were recording tonight, or I didn't know you were doing this or doing that. So I'm trying to like kind of dig us out of that hole here. So we're trying to let everybody know in advance. You won't be here. You won't be seeing a another podcast hit your feed until after the twentieth, which is when we're going to record our next episode. But next Thursday night, grounded. The week after that, probably some other game. We don't know for sure yet. Maybe Phasmophobia. I don't know. Um, so be sure to tune in for those. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, also, I did add a calendar, a simple Google calendar, back to the front page of fourplayernetwork.com. So if you're sitting here wondering. When do they record or what's coming up on, on, on Twitch or whatever? Go to fourplayernetwork.com, check out the thing. You can even add it. If you if you use Google calendars, you can even add it to your own. So it'll all it'll be part of you'll you'll merge your calendars together. It'll be beautiful. You'll always know when we're recording. It's great. Um But with that said, we're gonna do a shorter show tonight because I need to get all the post production done on it tonight. So we're doing one singular seg- segment tonight. We're just gonna blast through these 
these games. We got games to talk about. We're going to talk about Proteus. We're going to talk about Fashion Police Squad. We're going to talk about uh, what is it? Dome. D- oh, yes. Come on, help me out here. No, I don't have it Dome, in front of me. Dome Keeper. Dome Keeper. Yes, Dome Keeper. Uh, among other things. So let's just get right to it. Um, where do you where do you want to start? I'll go first. All right, Brad, hit us with your game. I didn't mention your game in, when I was just dropping these things. I so. know. That's why I'm going first, because you buried the lead, man. This is the hottest game of the, the season. Family time Haven't with Brad. Heard? Unfortunately, I've not been playing it. Um, but... You've been watching but other people play it? I have played it, and I've watched my wife and my son Henry play a whole whole lot of disney dreamlight valley have you, you seen this you heard about this you uh, malia it recorded week, this footage so i'm gonna i'm gonna take a look at it while he talks so i know what i'm looking at here um because i didn't <laughs> actually record it um have you have y'all seen this have you heard about this that, that's I, a legitimate I've question it, i've yeah. heard of it briefly briefly uh I'm, it's on game pass so it's uh it's hey okay. it's ratatouille this game is weird. Yeah, okay. that's not his name. Yeah. His name is Remy. This, yeah. this is this oh, is supposed shit. to be like Ratatouille uh, is a dish in the real world. You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> forgive this is, this me. Spo- this is supposed to be like Animal Crossing light, but with Disney, what are right? you doing? <laughs> oh, okay. No, that that's fine. That's a question. Uh, I didn't know you were asking a question when you said that. Yes, it is a. Uh, it is the new game uh, from Gameloft. Have you heard of Gameloft? No. Wait, oh, that actually, is a maybe. treasured name. Yeah, yeah. They they've been a they've been a a mobile developer for a very long time. You used to be known for just like knockoffs of other games. Uh, you know, the brother of of up. the of the dude w- owns Ubisoft r- owns Gameloft. So. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it, so yeah, they, they, they took it out of mobile development and into console development. Yeah, or, yeah. It's like uh, this, this so is the game they need to make to make it big. Yeah, so well, that's the thing. They, they've kind of made it I big it because th- they have seventeen different studios. So oh, I got I got it through Game Pass, but uh, if you play it on a different platform, you have to pay thirty dollars for it. But the thing is, it's just an early access, and when it comes out, this is a free to play game. Oh. So the fact that like Gameloft has a lot of Wait. like mobile history makes it seem like uh, this is probably going to be pretty rife with like microtransaction stuff. And mm-hmm. based on the type of game it is, which you know Chris Davis mentioned, this is kind of like an Animal Crossing game, except you're in the the world of Disney, and all of your villagers are Disney characters, mm-hmm. who uh, you know, and and that's. And you're going around, you're fishing, you're you're digging stuff with your shovel, you're planting crops, you're growing them, and then it's you're Wally. doing quests for yeah, Wally and, and and yeah. Go ahead. Can can, can you evict Wally? Uh, I don't know if you can evict them. I have to ask. That's my not wife, very. I'm Disney. pretty sure you can't. Here's okay. what's crazy, and you're you're about to see in a second. So so like you do all of these things, and you unlock like new areas and new like w- little pocket worlds that you can go in and like do stuff like you go to the ratatouille world and remy has all these like things quests for you to like cook different things and it's all about cooking and um you you go to the moana world and meet moana and and yeah you then you do stuff for them like this whole game is very fetch questy it's like i need shit i need you to go do shit go get me some shit and bring it back to me or go cook me something and bring it back and eventually, you know, these the characters will start joining your town and they'll have their own houses just like, you know, Animal Crossing. And you go in there and they look like, you know, like you get the you get Ariel's house and you go in there and it's like a cave and there's like a, a like a, a body of water in there. And she will there's, like, you know, inhabit that water because she's a fucking mermaid. Ariel. She can't walk she around your town. Does she have a lot of neat stuff in there? Uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> she gasmos and Giz- uh, Giz- Giz- gizmos Giz- and gadgets galore, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> or whatever. So look who look who my wife is talking to now. Um, by the way, her and her her and Henry are playing on the same character. 
um, which has been which has been a funny situation. I'll explain that in a second. But check it out. She's talking to the bad guy from Tangled, who mm. is like murderous. Like yeah. you know, at, at the end of that movie, she like nearly stabs like you know the dude to death. You know because she was trying to kill him, and that's the that's one, one of the weird things is that like also living in your town, also giving you quests like, hey, go get me some shit, or like. Ursula or Scar who just murdered Mufasa but it's okay because in Disney Dreamlight Valley they're just quest givers in town and people who live in your town which is kind of weird because like my wife was my are those like the racists of 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 this little my, Disney village what race yeah I'm sure there's racists in there right I, I mean isn't there like know, I mean we live we live in a society full of really shitty people. We have to just kind of put up. With yeah, them. but you don't have like to like do nice things for them. And my wife's only like, she's such a bitch. Like, like I get, I do things for her and she's just like, she's like a rude, whore, like jerk. <laughs> but it makes sense because she's a bad guy. Like she did a quest for Ursula. And she's like, I did all this shit for Ursula and I bring it back to her and I'm like excited to get like some cool thing from Ursula. And she gave me a shrimp and I'm like, what is this? A shrimp? And and I'm like, oh God, did you eat that shrimp? Because you remember in Little Mermaid, she would like shrink people down into like shrimps or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty horrifying. I'm going to be honest. Um, You kind of like jumped the gap in that conversation or switched gears too fast. And then said something about she's such a bitch, and I thought for a hot second I didn't realize you were talking about Ursula or, yeah. or, the, or the other or the okay. quest giver. You assumed I was talking about my wife and not the bad guy from a Disney movie. I mean, in in, in the heat of the moment, maybe I did. Nick. Uh, so there's all kinds of cool outfits and stuff, but like here's the crazy thing, and like you can do stuff just like Animal Crossing, where like lay paths and put up fencing. But my wife plays this exactly like Animal Crossing, where it's very Spartan. She doesn't care about about any of the outfits. She doesn't care about beautifying the village. Like, she just, I'm I'm here to do tasks. I'm here to fish and stuff. Like, there's, like, holes and shit all over the the thing. And it doesn't help that Henry's playing, too. He'll just start fucking digging holes everywhere. And, like, it's funny because they play on the same file but like henry he don't give a fuck he just gets some dumb shit in his head and he just i'm just gonna keep doing that like he'll just cook stuff for remy all day long and and, and me and and malia had to explain him like you can't just keep cooking you're just wasting all of our ingredients and you're just cooking them and just like like eating them and you can't do that like it takes a while to like get all these resources and like my wife will be like working or whatever and henry will start playing and like all like the stuff that she like looted to like gift or not looted uh forage to like give to people like rare drops sometimes are just gone they're just she'll get the game back and they're just gone and she'll be like henry what did you do with this stuff and he's like i don't know I don't know. And she doesn't know either. No one fucking knows. And like, she'll like, it'll set her back. Like a lot, like, like, like a lot of progress because all that, all you're doing is gathering shit for people. And then, then Henry just loses it or eats it all. And I've, I've seen him just there like eating raspberry after raspberry after raspberry. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, she's like, she's hungry. And, you know, <laughs> Henry, he plays video games like Kirby, but he doesn't understand a game. Like and he's played a little animal crossing, but he hasn't really know, gotten he, into resource management yet. Yeah, like when he plays Animal, like this is, when he played Animal Crossing, he loved hanging out in the aquarium or like, you know, the museum. And he likes making designs for like the outfits. So he'll just do that like the entire time. And we're just begging him, just walk around town and pick up some sticks or something. Because my wife and I, we sort of thought, oh, you know, like Henry wants to play. Maybe he can go pull some weeds or something, right? No, he doesn't do anything useful. <laughs> you know, it's not like we were going to like make him do the menial tasks, you're, but like he doesn't even do it do, a little wait, bit. Wait, wait, wait. Are you trying to get your son to do yard work in your, in your, your little, Disney I mean, that's what everybody here? does when they play animal crossing, but obviously he doesn't, he doesn't want to read yet. So he can't like do quests or anything. So we thought he would just like go do the stuff around town, but he, he loves hanging out in menus. He's my fucking son. And, and he just hangs on menus and like, he loves the cooking. I don't know. I don't know. Creative creative monster. Monster. 
It sounds like you have unrealistic expectations. I just don't understand why he doesn't go and like fish. He just as, as makes it, designs and he's like, okay. they're not good designs. He just. <sighs> so, you know, as hilarious as this story is, do you. Do you recommend this game? Do you do I do recommend you? it? I'm not even playing it um, okay. as an outsider. <laughs> um it seems like really addictive because there's always some shit to do. And I, I asked, I asked Malia, like, like what does she like about it? And she likes that. Um, there's, there's always shit to do and you're always working towards like unlocking a new character in a new, a new section or their own little world. And that's pretty cool because if you like Disney, like, you know, all those characters are in here and like, it'll play like, like instrumental versions of some of those songs and stuff. Like it's always playing like Disney music. And if, and you know, it's very, you know, like people have a lot of nostalgia or even like a lot of like for like, you know, the modern stuff, you know, like Moana is a cool movie. So like Moana's you know, a great movie. Yeah. Moana, uh, Maui, like moving into town is just kind of cool. It, she also said, you know, and like like an Animal Crossing or like a Stardew Valley or something like there's like friendship meters and as you do stuff for these characters or give them gifts like your friendship levels will go up and and there is like some mechanics there like she told me that if you like um like for example like maui's really good at like digging or something i don't think that's true i think goofy is good at digging so so but so once you befriend him to a certain level you can go talk to him and say like hey goofy i'm doing some digging and he'll like come along and as he's doing it with you he'll find stuff or like he'll boost like your chances for finding rare stuff so there is like systems there and that's kind of cool and you're like hanging out with the characters it, it there's some neat ideas but i'm worried that like you know, the, the game loft hit, you know, like the, the free to play stuff is going to be kind of gross once the game like officially comes out. Like I told you, there's like a $30 version on other platforms. I'm still trying to wrap my head this around. This is a free game, right? For a free to play game. <laughs> You're getting a lot of like the currency to unlock things when you buy that version, you know, but like, so that's, it, that's like a lot ask, of, because what do you get for it? You get, you get like, you know, the currency you need to like, that you have to kind of grind out otherwise, right? Like a lot of free-to-play games, you can buy a version that costs money and you're just getting a lot of that kind of stuff with it. And, you know, it's, I don't know, people seem into this. It's not like, no one's like, yeah, this is like game of the year. No one seems like really proud that they're into it or anything or like <laughs> happy about yeah. it. But like no one's really sad either. They're just like, yeah, this is kind of nice. This is kind of addictive. This is kind of cool. It's not my favorite game, but like I'll sure. I mean, sometimes that's yeah. fine. I just yeah. I just I, I kind of want to know what a village looks like from someone who actually gives shit about the way they're they're town looks because i'm going i'm, I'm going not getting that disney out of watching in, henry or malia play i'm going to disney in like two weeks or like a week and a half like maybe i'll, okay. maybe I'll play this when i get back oh, oh yeah <laughs> maybe i'll just maybe don't I'll get just I, hear, lose I hear it's like pretty bad on the switch um in terms oh. of the way it runs this is the the pc game pass version uh where gotcha. it runs fine so obviously so um oh, yeah it's mini was a oh. ghost and like Mickey was really sad because she was like gone. Oh, the the it's town, so like everyone this? forgot everyone else in the town and you're trying to help people remember them. And he, is he like forgot they, they many, by, like, or, like many died or something. And he's just trying to remember her. And he's like, make me some crackers because many used to make me crackers and I'm sad. <laughs> it's weird. That was actually pretty good. Brett. That wasn't a Mickey. That was more, I don't know, uh, Jiminy Cricket. I don't know what the fuck I was doing there, but that wasn't Mickey. He's like, oh, make me some crackers. I'm sad about Minnie. Yeah, it is, it's, a, well, it's a weird game. I'll take but it. But it's cool. Like, it seems strange that Disney gave them permission to just throw all this shit into one, like, game like this. Like, I don't I don't this do seems like some shit. Anymore. Well, this just seems okay, like some shit that, like, 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 four years ago would have been a mobile phone game but we're living in a post Genshin Impact world or something so oh. people are spending more money on on games that Dude. are designed to like drain people's wallets and if here we are. they made a Genshin Impact clone with Disney characters in like an open Disney world like that would be that I think you're looking so, at it dude no I mean kind kind of kind of I don't know Genshin Impact was cool but like just just keep know. it out of Square's hands and okay all right, All that's right. it. That, I spent way too long on a game I haven't even played much of. So, uh, it's, it's it's all good. It's all good. Let me talk about a game I have played. 
Uh, this I, I mentioned this last week that uh, I've been kind of looking forward to this game called Proteus for a while. It's been an early access. It's a boomer shooter. Um, and suddenly it was like, hey, it's coming out of early access in like three days. So here I am playing Proteus. Uh, I'm a Steam Deck, no less. Plays pretty well in the Steam Deck, if you're, if you're curious. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is a, a cla- this is, you know, like a modernized, you know, it's, it's very visually appealing. It's a very nice looking boomer shooter, but very much in the style of like classic Doom. Uh, Brad, you played a little bit of this, didn't you? Or like you dabbled uh, in it? Well, I'm mean, played like extreme, extremely little, uh, just because I haven't really had the opportunity. I can't really play this in front of my children or yeah. anything. And it's, uh, I have yeah, it on PC. Um, it's very but, bloody. <laughs> I played through like half of a level or something. And then I'm like, well, I got to go do stuff in my life. Yeah. And then and I turned it off and I came back and the game doesn't save or anything. You can't yeah. quick save. And well, so I just have to start the game over again. So, which, so I, I do want to clarify okay. that because, it, you know, it, I didn't realize I don't play. I haven't played a ton of boom of boomer shooters, right? This is kind of a, a new thing for me that I'm really starting to kind of get into these. But, you know, you talked about it, not quick saving. It, which didn't seem like a big deal to me because early on, like the first few, like the first two or three missions I did in this game were like not even quick save, like no minutes. saving at all. To well, be you clear. save it, yeah, you know, you save it, but like after you between, finish a mission, between it saves. levels, yeah, it saves between levels when you're in a yeah, level. I, no, it does not save, which is which very strange. Seem, okay, it didn't, it didn't strike me as strange at first. I just don't have a ton of history with boomer shooters, I guess, but like the early missions are like five or six minutes. Now I'm no, the they're point not. Like, if you're like running through them, but like the way I play these type types of games is, I spend a lot of time like making sure I get every secret. No, I and do stuff. too. This mission that I'm playing right here in this footage, I play this whole level in this footage, and it took me 18 minutes. Uh, and that's me like trying to find secrets because it is it's like it's like classic Doom. It's there's secrets hidden everywhere. There's switches that do random shit. You can see. Did you things. find all the there's, secrets in your 18 uh, minutes? I think I found all but like two of them. I think I don't remember. Um, um, eighteen minutes is not a short amount of time. No, to, no, but early, like, off. yeah. So earlier on, it didn't seem like a huge deal because I was I was getting through levels and finding like a hundred percent of the secrets in like six or seven minutes. Like it didn't seem like a huge deal. Now it's getting to a point where like okay, these level these levels are getting more and more complex. Like this level is by far the most complex I've played so far. Um, it is it is a labyrinth. Of of tunnels and doors and switches and verticality and all kinds of stuff with hit secrets hidden throughout. Um, I also think because in between these missions, so here's kind of what's weird and kind of unique about this game, I guess, is in between the missions you you have like a like a Mario Super Mario World style map, which you probably got a glimpse of when the footage first started. Yeah, so like yeah, yeah. You go between missions or whatever, or and and you're like moving around this like. You know, little nodes, yes. Little, yeah, little nodes. Um, but there's a shop in, that you can go to, and you use uh, gold bars and runes that you find in the levels to go into the shop and buy upgrades. And it seems to me like it's built for replayability because there's, I think, I think there are some secrets that you probably just won't be able to reach until you eventually get enough to buy, like the double jump, or there's a few other gadgets in there. I can't remember what they are, but like, um. As the game is getting more and more complex, I'm starting to feel like I don't know if I'm meant to actually be able to find all the secrets right now because I've scoured this thing for like 18 minutes. Like, you're supposed to go I'm back just... to previous levels? Yeah, I've, I mean, I've play, I've replayed several levels already, um, mostly because I was trying to save up for a gun or I was trying to, you know, uh, that I wanted. And the only way to do that was to go back and find some of the treasures or the... the like oh, the so, so you went I... back to clean up secrets to get more currency? Yes. Yes, and, okay. and, and it, it tells you like how many kills you get, how many uh, secrets you found. Uh, but you, 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 many, weren't, many... you weren't accessing areas that you weren't able to get to before because of upgrades? Correct. But I'm starting to suspect, because like I said, I'm only like 20% of the way through this game at this point, and it's, getting, it's steadily ramping up and becoming more and more complex that I, I'm, I, I feel like there's, gonna be, there's inevitably going to eventually be secrets that you can't reach until you have the double jump. Can't confirm you know, that, but like, why else would you even have a double jump? You know what I mean? It's, if it's like, not to get you to places that you couldn't get before. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because it's not like it's probably gonna be something you're using in combat or anything, right? Um, 
I will say the game is very visually appealing. I think that's what drew it's got a really I mean, good what, look. That's what kind of put it, the game on people's radar, honestly, right? Uh, yeah. But I I heard there was an option, like you know, all the enemies are like sprite based and stuff, right? Right. You yes. can turn that. You can make it to where they're not sprites. They're was just like three models. models. Yeah, I think I think that I think that goes for all the sprite stuff too, because I'm pretty sure you're also. Is are your gun a sprite as well? I can't I, I can't so. tell in this footage. It seems like a three D model. Very shrunk down I mean, on my phone, but it's kind of hard to tell. But like you can really tell when like when like enemies die and they fall on the ground and then you like move around them like they kind of turn with you to like stay two D. Yeah, like, it's because um, you know it, like Doom was sprites, right? I get it, but like it's also weird that they have the option to have it be models. I, I wonder what that looks I'm like. Try that. I'm gonna go try that. I, there are there yeah, are. Yeah, I think a lot things. of the visual stuff you can change or turn off to make it there look are a, more modern. I, I think Carlos said of, that he had turned off some of that stuff and prefers yeah. it without the visual gimmicks to make it look like an older game. Um, like I like you know how that. like like your reload animation is seems very low frame rate. I think you can yeah. like turn that off. But I so, kind of like I that. Know, I curious. feel like that's kind of what gives it, you know. Per, I mean, I've I've been, generally speaking become a sure, big, a but really there's big a, fan of like these these retro these modern retro looking games. So yeah, um, I, I mean, I get it. it, but like there, are, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, I, sure, sure, but there's there's so many of them that like I don't think you have to be behold. I mean, like if if you want a game that has this aesthetic, you could just play like you know w- w- Ion Storm yeah. or whatever the fuck the game was because that just that's just a game that looks like that all this all the time. You know what yeah, I mean? I like in, in terms of, cause it's like a build engine yeah. game or whatever. Right. But, but, um, one thing I heard about this game, which blew my fucking mind. Granted, I only played half a level. I heard some people complain that the game is not very difficult. And okay, that's so not I, what, I, what, I, really I, what I, I wanted to, to talk about. It's that what I heard is that there's a checkpoint system, right? And yes. so, yeah, you know, you can't yeah. save, you get to these checkpoints when you die, you respawn at the checkpoints, right. the, 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 the enemies don't respawn. They don't. So like you turn up the difficulty because you want the game to be harder. So you die a lot quicker, but you get into like a big arena fight and let's say you're 80% through that fight and you just die. Well, you just respawn at a checkpoint and you're just doing a long walk back with nothing to fight. And then you get to that room to just finish, yeah. finish off the last few enemies that's insane. Why would they do it like that? It is an odd choice. And I think there's a few odd choices about this game. One of the things that I've, uh, one of the things that kind of comes to mind is, um, well, one, I think the difficult, I think it is a little on the easier side. I think it's I, well, like what difficulty level, did you pick? Well, I played on normal at first and now I'm playing on hard and I might even bump it up to the next one. Um, <laughs> and, and I, that's kind of unusual. Strange I for think. a boomer shooter. As, as, it, it seems to me, it, it feels to me like there's a lot of enemies. So there's a lot of like zombie enemies and like demons and what. It feels very, very, very doom. But there's also enemies that have guns, and sometimes I feel like they're just carrying guns and not using them, um, which seems kind of odd. Wait, what does that uh, mean? Like the enemies w- like visibly have a gun, and unless you sit still and look at them for a second and give them a chance, like you'll annihilate them before they even like raise their gun up to shoot at you. Oh, the, uh-huh. they're trying to do the telegraph thing, I think, and they're just not quite. Maybe they sort of missed the mark and it's, made it a I little mean, too slow. I think for the bit, I think to its credit, I think there are far more enemies that don't have guns. They're more like dooms, like zombies and demons and, you know, creatures and sure. stuff. So yeah. it doesn't really come up too much. Um, the other thing is there is a sprint button that you have. When you're playing on a controller, you have to hold down the left analog stick while running, which is kind of awkward. But the, mm-hmm. but the difference between running hold and not running analog stick no, 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 the the run the yeah the, you have to push down you have to hold the stick. click down yes that can't while be right moving. that can't be right I, I mean that's the default well, on, on pc you hold down shift but that's that's par for the course for this type of game i know click that can't be you right click in the left thumb stick in order to run and you have and to you, hold it while you're running no. but there isn't <laughs> no. a, yeah dude I'm, I'm i'm let me tell you it's that is the case but there is an option in the menu to just turn on permanent sprinting, which I yeah, did. Sure, uh, yeah, do that. So, sure, but yeah, so that's weird. There, it is. It is. It is so frustrating because like the difference between sprinting and not sprinting is so minute that I almost forgot sprinting existed. And I found this like there was a room where you have to jump across these platforms, right? But I couldn't make it to the middle platform. I was driving me crazy. I was like, I, I think I've reached a, a wall. 
I was like, I don't think I can proceed past here until I get double jump. And then I had to go into the controller menu and see, like, is there a feature I'm forgetting about? And I remembered there's a fucking sprint button. And as soon as I started sprinting towards the thing and jumping, I made it. And I was like, but you, I didn't feel like there was much of a difference between me not sprinting and sprinting. It was so dumb. So I was like, I'm just going to turn permanent sprinting on because what the fuck? Um, so that's kind of a frustration. So I recommend boosting the difficulty. I recommend using the permanent sprinting. Um, but outside of that, those like weird quirks and the thing that you mentioned about the, about the, the checkpointing, which is admittedly odd. Why, this game why, is a ton of fun. This game's been in early access for years. And, and I, I know yeah. people have had to complain about that. Why do you think they did not try to implement something that I'm is wondering a if that will make more sense later? Traditional. I mean, like I said, like the, the missions are getting progressively more and more complex and difficult. And I'm still pretty early in this game. So um, how, how, do you, how, do you game, how do you lose this game? How do you lose this game if every time you die, you just come back and finish what you died doing? I don't know. I don't. I'm, I'm wondering. Is there? A, I'm, <laughs> I haven't died much, and that again is a testament to its <laughs> its weird. its simplicity. Um, maybe I need to bump. But it that's up what like I'm saying. Hard, like you'll die more. more at harder difficulties, but that doesn't actually make anything. the game harder. It just makes it more tedious walking back to where you died. It it is it is strange. I I totally give you that. It is it is weird. But for a second, let me just tell you, this game is fun. the The guns feel really nice. All the guns have really uh, fun, unique firing, uh, like alt like alt fires and shit. My favorite is the plasma rifle, which you can fire like a tracker into an enemy, and then you can it's, it's like you're curving bullets, like they'll go around corners and shit. You mm. kind of see the trajectory mm. of it. So if you're Resistance taking a lot of fire, you can yeah, like bike resistance. You can get around behind a, a wall and shoot around the, the corner to hit them without taking damage, uh, which is pretty cool. And some of the secrets that the the secrets are becoming more and more challenging to find. I'm really interested to see what this game looks like after I get like 50% of the way through 75% of the way through, because it is getting, it is steadily amping, amping upwards. Um, and the level design so far seems really cool, but now you can, that's going to bug me. Like you make a really good point. What the fuck happened? Like, can you lose this game? I guess you I can run out of ammo, right? I mean, but like, what is that? What is that going to do? You, by the time you run out of ammo, everything in a level will be dead. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I heard, Another weird thing is that when you die, your guns have also not reloaded. Yeah. I think so that's <laughs> and you have all these guns. So you die and you just, you're just walking back through empty corridors, reloading each one of your weapons before you get back. It's just some strange choices, which, which is fine, except this game has been in early access for a long time. So like, why? I mean, and whatever people the, you, like it. So, so maybe the, maybe not many people are complaining, but, uh, that is, yeah, I, I, I mean, I heard, I I heard that. Sense. I'm like, that's a weird thing. I mean, Bioshock did that, but Bioshock was like an, a, a different kind of game. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it it's, it's about, strange. Hmm. I, I think I, uh, as, as strange as all those things sound, like I will say at the end of the day, this game is very, very fun to play. Um, and you I know, I, I've watched thing. a couple of your streams of this, and I'm watching your footage now. I've only and, streamed it once. Well, then I then I watched that stream. And or you must have watched Carlos play pretending to be me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe that. Maybe who knows? Um, but either way, what the 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 thing that kind of strikes me about what I've seen in the enemy designs thus far is that very few of them are projectile based. They're mostly yeah, just no. melee. Um. That that feels kind of weird for it, that's kind of what I was saying like like and I, and I think that's early on. I think that's going to become progressively more and more like right the enemies are getting there's, there's every level there's more enemies, they're more aggressive. There's more shooting. So like when you saw me streaming, I was playing like the first two levels and that definitely starts to amp up. Um but like I said, like I, it, it, most of the enemies that I've seen so far have been not projectile based, which is you know why I noticed early on that any slow with guns I mean, were not the whole doing I mean, thing like is demons slow will shoot shit at you, but you move so quickly it's really easy to dodge. And I haven't taken so much damage that I've I like quite honestly, I think I've only died like three times, maybe. That's so, crazy. so you know, I think I need I think I need maybe you know, maybe the default difficulty maybe this game was built around playing on the hardest difficulty, and that's why everything seems so strange. Like maybe all this stuff will just make sense once I 
I bumped the difficulty back up. I don't know. I'm going to try it. <laughs> there was I, also not... three difficulties easier than normal. Like, I get that's because that's like the Doom way, right? But like... The, There's actually uh, secretly no difference between like the, the first four difficulty <laughs> levels at all. Just don't, this game was in early access. I don't get it. Yeah, Maybe this is strange. a developer who was in, put out a game in early access and they're like, fuck all these people. We know we're not going to listen to them at all. I'm going to keep making the game I want to make. Uh, yeah. Weird. yeah. With that said, uh, I do recommend it. It's fun. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And it plays great on Steam Deck. Um, I was a little worried at first because I thought it didn't have cloud saves, but it has its own built-in cloud save system, which I thought was strange. It doesn't use Steam, but it has a, it has its own. I forgot it's called like ProtoNet or something. Oh, uh, it's weird. connected to your it's connected to your Steam account, so you don't have to like sign up for any extra service, or whatever. It's just like you connect your Steam account when you log in when you access the game, and it uploads it to their cloud, not Steam's. Well, maybe maybe it's like which... cross-platform saves or something. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. sure I'm sure that's what it's for. Um, huh. But yeah, I just at first I was, I was at first I was like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to bounce back and forth between my PC and Steam, and you totally can. So, um, but anyways, yeah, that's Proteus. I I do recommend it. it. Sounds strange, but I do recommend it. Um, hey Nolan, what up? What what you been playing? What's what's this? Uh, what's the latest Nolan game? You said it earlier. Dome Keeper. There you go. Hell yeah, I got it. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, Dome Keeper, uh, roguelite, kind of tower defense, uh, d- uh, dungeon, I don't want to say dungeon crawler. Um, so it, it's a similar concept. Um, I, I kind of, I, I, it just came out and I was, you know, thinking of Minor Dig Deep because that's what I was playing. And this is, this looks like, I was like, this looks like Minor Dig Deep. But the, the whole point is, is you're, you're a keeper of a dome. Uh, you land on an alien planet and you need to gather resources um, to protect your dome um, from the, you know, species that live on this planet. Um, and so, Makes you know, sense. it is, it is roguelite um, in that, uh, for the most part each kind of level has like a goal like in this in this uh case uh my goal is to find a relic uh once i find that relic it's basically like i'm done uh but there are like endless like uh levels there are different like goals and stuff i've only i've only played three runs uh so far um but uh you know you saw right there if you're watching the footage mm-hmm. you know you have skill tree um so you have um, different upgrades so you can upgrade your jetpack so you can move faster you can upgrade your drill so you can uh, drill faster or you know once you start to get deeper in this in the earth um, it takes a lot um, to drill that deeper dirt um, and then as you can saw if you're watching the footage again I tried to pick up too many resources and you get super slowed down uh, but once again you can upgrade that so you can what carry is that more car- like what is- oh is that just a jetpack that you I was trying to figure out what yeah. your character actually is it's just a person with a jetpack on yeah it? a person with a jetpack um and then um so you do all this mining and stuff during the day and then at nighttime that's when they you know the the creatures come and attack your base and so you have like a little laser on your base that you can kind of you know move around the dome and you oh it's point- like missile command yes it's it's like <laughs> missile command um uh it will for with this one there's actually a different dome that are like that i unlocked that instead of having that uh laser it has a sword and you fling <laughs> the sword around your Ooh. base um and then you can upgrade it to be a projectile uh for flying enemies because you you do have flying enemies um there are you know roguelike element uh you will find these um they're like almost i don't know like micro trips or something uh i forget what they're shards or something like that um randomly throughout the uh, when you're digging and you can bring it back and you get like a random upgrade um so that could be um so the ones i've gotten are uh, a pulse um so when you're digging down you can release a pulse and it will flag uh resources that are near you that um, are underground or, so you, you can kind of see them before you've dug that way you mean exactly so you kind of know where to go um you can get one uh that is a lift so it's this you know this beam of energy and then you can drop resources in that beam and these orbs will slowly bring it back up for you um you can get one that's um uh, it's a dr- drill something it's like a little like dinosaur um that will like you know slowly uh mine for you um there's a lot of cool little upgrades um 
And then as you see, there's... Does the ever a, get bigger, or is, or is no. that what you're protecting the entire time? Yeah, no, you're just protecting that one. So I think th there's like a... I just unlocked, and I've only played a little bit of it, like almost like an endless run, um, where um, your whole goal is to get as many resources as you can and send them back, I guess, to like, you know, the, the I don't know if you're like the mining company head or whatever. Uh, you send them back. Uh, you're like a little out, you know... Uh, an outpost and you're trying to gather resources for you know the the main area uh, and you send them back and so that's the one i just unlocked but yeah you upgrade you unlock upgrades for it so um in this very original one you know your laser can get stronger there are upgrades to make it move uh faster oh one of the other yeah. upgrades are the little like uh relic things or whatever they're called i got was a um a stun beam so it's a thing that will automatically try and find an enemy and shoot a stun laser at them that the base level doesn't do any damage it just stops them so you can kind of night not worry about them as if, if you're watching the footage you've seen early on like one two three enemies are attacking in later like as time goes on more and more and more start coming to where you get overwhelmed um so there are other play. things yeah. So by default, you have like a, a shield as well. So you can upgrade that shield so your dome doesn't take damage. You can overcharge the shield, um, uh, but that requires like water um, and water is yeah. a, a scarce resource. Are you like um, going to get resources while things are attacking? Um, so no, um, at, at first, so at first you don't really know when day becomes night, but as you see on the bottom left, I, I, I got an upgrade and it's it's super cheap. It's only it's like two uh, of the main resource uh, to to know essentially the time of day um and so you'll see it slowly ticking down and if you're watching the footage now it's about to hit nighttime and so it'll start making a noise it'll start like bing 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 like hey they're coming like and the alert goes off so you know you need to get back right but there can be times when you're trying to do one last run and you're carrying a bunch of resources and you're going slow but you want to get back and so i'll end up like dumping all my resources because i because you fly faster because uh, I, I well crap i got to get back to defend my base um uh yeah there's there's a lot of like upgrades and stuff and like i said i've only done like three runs so far in it um each way they each one lasted about like 30 40 minutes um uh and you and, died and in those runs or you succe uh, were successful I, i've been successful each time um hmm. but i i have seen um uh, when i first kind of found out about the game i kind of looked up some footage just to see if it was something i was interested in and i saw some other people dying and i think honestly i probably learned a little bit from them and so i kind of knew a little bit better how to how to go about it uh but i i haven't uh i came close a couple times to dying um but that, there's the whole juggle of do I spend more resources to beef up my dome so it's more powerful or has more defense or health? Um, or do I use those resources to make myself better so I can get other resources faster? You know, it's that constant, you know, back and forth. Um, this is in, in the, if you're watching the footage as an example, I found one of those old relic things. Um, I, I don't remember what I got from this one. I think it might be the lift. Um, uh, that we bring it back and you know you get the the upgrade and stuff like that. Um, Drillbird, uh, I love it. Yeah, Drillbird's the name of the little the little drill dinosaur guy. Um, but yeah, so in this oh. this one, yeah, I got the the lift thing. Um, any upgrade you have now has its own skill tree um, in your upgrade menu, so everything can get, be upgraded further. Uh, like in the example, of the lift, you can get you, you can get it to where it will actually boost you. Um, so when you're in that lift space, you move faster. Um, you can get it to where it can carry more resources at a time, that it moves the resources faster. Everything. Um, like I think when you're playing like the basic, like almost the find the relic one, you don't get too far uh, because by the time you find the relic, you've only gathered so many resources. But I think when you're going into the more like endless, I think it's called like prestige mode or whatever. That's when you'll probably really need all of those upgrades, as many as you can. Um, to uh to to really make use because like i said every night just more enemies more enemies and more types of enemies um in the footage so far you've only seen some of the basic ones so there's like a big lumbering guy um some kind of bat like creatures that will like um become uh, what's the word i don't i don't I, you can't like they'll they'll kind of you can't hit them. They'll go into a form where they're almost like a ghost. You can't hit them and they move no, around kind of like phase out of. Yeah, they, they exactly. They physical. phase and then they show somewhere else. And so you have to kind of track them. Um, and then but later on, you'll start. There's all there's this, this group of enemies. that are all these tiny little ones that kind of come all at once. And they, each one has is weak on health. Uh, but if you don't take them all out, like if a, one of the lumbering guys moves in front of them, uh, as soon as they, they all jump onto your base and attack. Uh, but later on, there are way more powerful 
uh, enemies that come like these giant flying like huge creatures that take a lot of do a lot of damage there's this one guy that's almost like i would describe it like almost like a gorilla like he runs up to the base really fast and does like a big yell and then jumps on the dome and just starts hammering the shit out of it um and it gets pretty fucking scary when you get into those further enemies um that like you really have to like be spending resources uh to make sure your dome is like is as powerful as it can be and, and as, as, as safe as it can be um but you yeah, been playing and, this on the on the Steam Deck. Sector. So yeah, so that's one thing. It's not verified through the Steam Deck. Um, it does run on it, and I actually didn't have any issues when I was playing it on the Steam Deck. But it seems like I don't have access to my cloud save. Um, that's I feel like that's kind of like like some games are like perfectly fine on the Steam Deck, but like for whatever reason they don't accept cloud saves. And I'm wondering if that like is a, I'm wondering I, if that is like a a checkbox that has to be ticked in order for it to be verified. You know what I mean? Potentially. I think, I think it's also just, it's a new game from a you know, smaller developer. I'm sure eventually it will start having cloud saves, but as of right now, I just have two different games going on. One on my yeah. steam deck. I one on my main computer, but I will say it runs great on the steam deck. I, oh. I've had no issues with it on the steam deck. So I, mean, the, I guess the only like, call out I would have is the text is a little small, yeah, uh, which yeah. is probably another reason that it's not designed for a that not yeah. Steam Deck verified. I'm sure they probably want to do some updates um, that will you know make the text a little bit bigger, you know, do whatever before it's official. But it does. It's work. so cool that like some games are like they've made this distinction between playable and verified. But like playable is still in in almost every game that I've tried that's playable. It's perfectly playable. It's just like there's few caveats, and a lot of times I, it's I, text size. Th this one is not even uh, playable. It's like uh, it's I, I forget what the term it is, but it's like oh, Steam does not have enough information on this game yet. Uh, yeah, it's dude, like not I, even I, like. Mm -hmm. I, I have Dragon's Dogma. I downloaded that Dark Erosion, and I, I'm pretty sure when I installed it, it was like not enough information, or or maybe it was like a yellow the yellow eye or it's whatever play, yellow is playable but, but but like now it says no this does not oh, work really? on steam deck not supported but, but like i thing. played it on steam deck so like i'm wondering what happened that like what's gonna go wrong that it doesn't work on steam deck anymore or, or i think or there's officially... documentation for the games if you if you dig into like if, if you click on that icon i think it goes into more information no but it's not that icon anymore it, it's the -uh. Not supported. -uh. Not supported. Yeah, I'm saying if you, if you, if you like, I think all of them, no matter what the status, I think it has documentation as to why it's oh, been I'll given that, that. Yeah, if if you go into that thing, Brad, like I just, I just kind of pulled up the one with like the question mark or whatever, and it's kind of hard to see. Uh, but it says uh, Valve is still learning about this title. We do not currently have. We'll pull up Trevor Star Wars real quick. Well, I don't have it in my library. I mean, I guess I could look uh, it up on the in the store real quick. None of a bit. Well, this game looks cool. I mean, God, I mean, do you think this dude? who made this game or these people are a fan of minor dig deep or maybe yeah. just the steam world dig games. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of both. I wouldn't be surprised. That was a much higher profile game. Yeah. Have you, ha have you been playing more minor dig deep? Oh yeah, for sure. I've been, I've, I've been playing that one as well on my steam deck. Yeah. Oh, Sweet. for sure. That, that's, that's the, the, the boot I'm currently like... in. Oh yeah, d definitely. I, like I said, I've only unlocked, um a few um of like the the upgrades and stuff like i said there's other there's other dome styles there's other um like modes uh there's there's even one more thing i forget what it, oh there's other um uh, keepers uh, like engineers uh there's yeah. another one at least um so yeah i i'm gonna at least unlock all of the major stuff uh before i uh give up on it uh, brad um dragon's dogma dark arisen is verified what? Oh, well, i guess i i guess they finally it's, it's verified uh fixed it or whatever cool yeah. cool beans all right um chris davis do you have a game called I do fashion have a video police game. squad fashion police seems squad. like the most chris davis ass game <laughs> but uh, admittedly it looks pretty cool from what i saw you, know, is, I was, you say indeed. that but i also don't consider chris davis like a fashionista or anything i am not a fashionista at all this is a My whole world has been shattered. This is a boomer shooter style comedy game in which you play as what? a sergeant in the fashion police in the fashion mecca of the world, Trendopolis. And you are basically going, going around town, uh, investigating fashion crimes that are happening around um, and, and solving like them. Using people? Yes, you are shooting people. You're not killing anyone. 
you were just correcting their fashion crime. So uh, there's there's a whole arching plot line. That's it's it's very much a comedy game. Um, a lot of puns, a lot of in jokes, a lot of references to uh, a bunch of famous video games. You were such a mark for like meme games. <laughs> no, I mean I'm not saying. I mean, this I can't. Cool, no, but... I will not deny that. I mean I can't be a mark for a a good meme game if it's funny to me. Um. No, but I, mean, I do like this concept. I'm be telling. You, I do like this concept quite a bit. But yeah, uh, no, this I'm, is. I'm still trying to wrap my head around your, what, like, what your gun does exactly. So you have multiple guns. Um, this I I want to start off by saying this game is very much inspired by Doom Eternal. Um, what? That's funny. So is Proteus. Well, uh, I'm I when I say Doom Eternal, um, there's a, a strong amount of mobility, and uh figuring out the right weapon for the right guy at the right time and prioritizing mm-hmm. your targets. Um, gotcha. In As this, opposed like, to just picking whatever gun you, you feel like in that given moment. Exactly. You, you cannot okay. use every gun for every enemy in this game. One gun, one or one gun or two guns are very specific to particular enemies. Like I uh, have to ask because Robin would be losing her mind right now. If she was watching this, there is, is that a gnome? That you're throwing at people? Gnome. Yes. Yes, you are throwing gnomes. Uh, that, what does that's the gnome part. do? So the gnome is designed to capture a few enemies in this game. Um, the first one you encounter is the, the fashion uh, tourist who is walking around town wearing socks with sandals. And they're, what they're designed to do is to... You throw them and they actually home in and jump on the tourist and then attacks them and rips the socks off them. Okay. Interesting. Um, all right. Yeah, there's it, it it's all <laughs> sorts of things. Like the enemy I'm about to introduce right now also uses the 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 gnome. Uh this is the What is the, that? What is this? This is wearing? the Speedo and Crocs guy, Mr. Spindos. No. Yeah. Okay. He he, he attacks good. he has multiple attacks like he he jumps in the I air and does a body slam on the ground or or he whips at you with a towel. Um so you have to throw wear- gnomes at him to get rid of his issue with his crocs. And then you had to use the the machine gun and its alt fire to stun him and weave a shirt onto him. It's weird, okay. but it's really fun. Uh, there's every enemy feels very distinct. They all have uh, unique attack patterns, um, and it, it becomes this really fun loop of prioritizing your targets, knowing what to go after, and uh, figuring out new ones and how how to deal with them. Also, the boss fights are really good in this game. I'm really enjoying with them. The guy, with the with the guy wearing the uh, the outlawed swimwear, would he would he be considered a boss, or is that just a new enemy type? That's just a new enemy. Type. Okay. Yeah. What what the hell is this guy? Okay. This is Sorry. this is the called the made. It is a sewing machine gun. Pretty good. Yeah. Sorry. What's up? What's up, Brad? On the topic of gnomes, like how. Robin, how like weak for gnomes is she? Does she, Dude, does she know like gnomes consume... I have in this house? Yeah, she has no, tons but does of gnomes. She, Do you remember the story? Does she consume like a lot of gnome media and stuff? Like no. Gnomeo and she Juliet just, or, or whatever? She, like, she just, no, 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 no. She just likes okay. gnomes a lot. So like every time she goes, like she goes shopping, she goes to like Target or something. She almost always comes back with a gnome of some sort. But only the physical gnome. Like when she plays in our, like, you know, Baldur's Gate, does she... Would she pick gnome as when the Robin plays sword? Baldur's Gate? I don't think Robin's really into Baldur's Gate. Okay, I mean she likes, I mean Bioware made Baldur's Gate, and she likes Bioware yeah. games. So sure. Like, there's also a new Baldur's Gate coming out. I, I, who that's gonna have a lot of Bioware DNA. She loves Mass Effect, right? She does love Mass Effect, yes. But I feel like Mass Effect is like the is maybe the exception to the rule more than <laughs> more than anything. Oh, okay. Um, well. I mean, I'm just saying, sure. she, she, you, maybe you're right. Maybe, she, maybe I need to introduce her to Baldur's Gate so she can play with a gnome. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just saying, she loves gnomes. Yeah. Everywhere she goes, she yeah. she finds gnomes. We have gnomes everywhere. Anyway, gnomes we, coming out of our ears. Well, you, well, so you she'll, love, get, she'll love the gnome gun. Yeah, she'll she'll like these. These are They're kind of like gnome grenades, really, because, again, you throw them, and they will run up and attack. They'll home in on the enemy. Um, it's 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 pretty entertaining. Every Every weapon in this game feels good. Um, the combat feels fast and uh, challenging at times, um, and it has a lot of balance tweaks to really make every big encounter feel exciting to jump into. You know, it's kind of strange. Of the two boomer shooters that we're talking about this week, 
of which Proteus is like Proteus is like a at, on the surface level seems like a pretty um, faithful like recreation of of the original of like classic Doom, but but after Brad pointed out some of like the weird, <laughs> the weird shit with that game, I feel like this might be the more the more um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is the boomer shooter that makes the most sense, despite the fact that it is also incredibly weird. Yeah. Does that make like, sense? Like I said, there's, there's a lot of inspiration from boomer shooters in here. Um, it's uh, I mean like the, the guy Fieri clone that I was just fighting just now with my drip gun, which is basically a water cannon. Um, he, he is, his attack animation is basically the revenant from doom, you know, r- raising his fists in the air and doing flame blasts at you. Uh, right. like I said, there's a lot of inspiration. Uh, again, it's, it is mainly a FPS, um, uh, uh, just basic shooter, but are there secrets? There's plenty of secrets to find. Um, it's, it's usually some kind of character art related to the, the main character you're playing as. Um, Boo. but they're, they're also hidden in a bunch of different places. And a lot of those character, the, the, the that art is actually kind of fun. Cause it's a lot, a lot of it is based on like different IP. Like I, I ran into a Harry Potter outfit the other day. Uh, I ran into a uh, tonight random. I think I ran into like a, a, a kingdom hearts one as well. Um, hmm. yeah, and they're, and they're hidden all over. Like I, I, I only discovered today with the drip gun that here we go. I found a secret by spraying a, a painting to find out what was underneath it. Is um, that the rock? The- no, a water gun is in this game just because of the drip pun. Like that's Probably. it. That's the joke. But, I mean, it has multiple uses. It, it, it I, again, every weapon has multiple functions to it. Um, like the drip gun, it has it has it, its primary attack is just a standard spray. Um, its uh, secondary attack is a, a precise uh, machine gun Ooh. thing that dr- <gasps> loses power over time, but. It also has the ability to where if you spray any water on the ground, it gives you a speed boost, kind of like in uh, in Portal Two. That's cool. You yeah. didn't mention these like crazy platforms. You're like you're like I was about you're, to like, get to it. I didn't get a chance to get to it. You're Spider Maning around this place with a fucking belt. That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, your your belt is also your melee weapon. Um, I'm demonstrating here your special ability um, where you uh, go into a ultimate drip mode and you. Uh, Slap enemies into being uh, fashion appropriate. Um, fashion appropriate. You gotta, you gotta remember, Brad. At the, at the, at the end of the day, this is a meme game, but it's also pretty. It's also pretty I, well designed. It seems like mm, when Brad says I, I meme like, game, that means it's like a single gimmick that's not meant to be anything more than it. It's it. That's shows not what I, I. That's not what I'm saying. It could be a lot of fucking <laughs> memes I, or this, puns. I, I mean, I, there's, there's a, this is a comedy shooter. Um, it's sure. I get the, what you're the saying. writing is very fun. I, mean, I got a bunch of laughs out of it. Um, a lot of the scenarios it throws at you, um, are great. Uh, again, I purposely cut out a particular sequence and also I cut out footage of a boss fight because I think those are something people it? need to experience. They're, they're, they're too okay. good for what they are. You know, I, I might actually, I'm, I, you know, I like a good boomer shooter as evidenced by several that I've played this year. I might try this. This looks pretty cool. It is pretty fun. And by the way, Nick, it's not Steam Deck verified, but it's Fuck it, playable. I'm not playing it. <laughs> it's playable. I do. Uh, I, like half the games that I've played on my Steam Deck are quote unquote playable and not yeah. verified. It's, it's, a, like it's only issue is that, that the playable. text is a little small on the Steam Deck. That's all. Yeah, that is all it takes to, to, to make a game. To, small text is all it takes to go from verified to playable on the steam deck a lot of the time. So, yeah. Uh, but like yeah. I, I, I keep exploring and finding new mechanics to this game that the game doesn't even brief you on. Um, like I found out, uh, that you could certain colored, uh, umbrellas that you find across the map and awnings actually provide you a bounce boost. So you can actually go into uh, previously off limits areas to pick up uh, bonuses, find more secrets and stuff. Um, that's cool. Really like, like, honestly, the platform, the platforming design actually seems really interesting. So, I don't know. I might give this a shot. It's called Fashion Police Squad for those Nick, who would like a run. You're not going to give this game a shot. I don't believe you. you should buy this is the opposite of a Nick yet. aesthetic. <laughs> wait, it does look wait, pretty, wait, wait, it does wait, look wait, pretty wait. fun. 
the Nick aesthetic? Are you saying because it's not like ultra violent? <laughs> not that I'm not interested in it. Oh, it's geez, clever. I, I wasn't jumping to violence, but you know, just dark and and uh, and uh, fucked up. You know. Say it, Brad. I know you. Yeah, want to. I mean, there's not no fucking mystery. What are you talking about? Yeah, this is an opposite of like a Nick aesthetic. So I wonder, like, if I'm also there's got like, there's got to be some resistance. Well. What I'm saying is, I find it funny be- since y'all talked about it last week. Like, what what do you want from me? You did what? I've been thinking about Tinykin. Almost <laughs> bought it like three times. That's great. That's great. Since the last no, time we but talked. what I'm saying is the thing. What am I trying to say? I feel like the thing know. that is like such so appealing to Chris Davis is is like the thing that would be like making you like somewhat resistant to trying it. You're like seeing this, oh, it's another boomer shooter. Oh, the grappler looks pretty good, which is fine because it does. I mean, like the game looks pretty fun, but I feel like the draw of it is something that seems kind of anti-Nick. Well, Comedy I and I mean, puns I like, I'm gonna be and honest. silly colors. I mean, I, silly, colorful characters. I like, I mean, I just, I just think the kind of the conceit of the game, like the fashion police, which is something that everybody jokes about, like the fashion police is is just a thing. It's a concept that, you know, we've all been familiar with for ages. I think making, turning that concept into a boomer shooter is just really endearing. I don't know. I like it. I'm not, I can't, I mean, obviously we're watching footage here. I can't hear any of this. I can't really speak to the writing because I can't really hear or read anything about it. I'm basing this purely off of the footage and what Chris Davis has said, but Based on those things, I find it pretty intriguing. Like the the writing is fun. The the what's your what you can't hear right now is that uh, when you kill or when you fashion correct a suspect, um, it it pops up like a like a, an adjective to describe them like damn or or fabulous, see, and you get this announcer that just <laughs> emphasizes it is really yeah. funny. Um, I, I, uh, also, when you finish, I want to give like. Go ahead. You got more. To say. I was gonna Go say ahead. when you finish it, and you're actually gonna see it right now. When you complete the 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 map, the level, it uh, you go to the parole ball where it's just a it's it's just a catwalk where all the suspects go down and you know uh, show strut their stuff. It's 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 I really gotta ask. You you did some of the voice acting there. Is there some like. Is this game kind of like offensive? Also, <laughs> like, I don't think it is. Maybe, maybe, okay. maybe to people who wear, you know, sandals with socks on. I don't know. Or speedos are you, are you, and Crocs are you, only. Are you specifically referring to? Is it maybe a little homophobic? Well, I mean, I, I mean, uh, look, Queer Eye is a, a is a super or popular a show, line. right? And it has to have partly been some Wait, like what, inspiration what for. Queer Eye for the... Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. No, I didn't hear what he said. It, I didn't, okay. it, and, and it has to be like an inspiration a little bit because you're making people fashionable, right? Which is what they do in that show. So... That's part know. of it. The way I, you I said honestly, fabulous I don't think there's ma- anything makes me a little worried, worried I, that it might be somewhat offensive. I mean, well, I, I, I mean, don't honestly, think there's anything in here. And from, I mean, honestly, from the Steam reviews want... I've read, they've not mentioned anything like that. It seems like it's all in good fun, but you know, it's also one of the kind of thing where you can probably find an answer to that question pretty quick. Because if there is something offensive, believe me, someone's going to say something about it. So it's you know. Oh no! I mean, simple. hey, by all, I mean, I, I'm. I just never mind. Never. No, I get it. I get it. I feel you. I feel you. All right. Um, are there any? Is there anything else? Any? any is there any any games that I miss here? Um. No. Um, so no. I played a little bit of the beta. Uh, Dragon Ball: The Breakers. Oh, <gasps> shit. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, just to spend, you know, two, not even two minutes on it. Um, it is tough. Uh, for the um, this is the term. Evolve style Dragon Ball uh, game. Correct. Yes. It, some, uh, yeah, Evolve is the best way to describe it. One, one player is um the uh the in, the enemy. Um, and then yes, you know, six, six, seven, I guess, players are the heroes. Um, so one person is either uh, Frieza, Boo, or Cell, um, in trying to you know uh, absorb either you know c- civilians in the world or heroes to mm. to gain their energy to evolve to the next level, and everyone else is trying to find keys um, to activate like the time machine, um, or um, if the time machine ends up getting destroyed. 
um, and trying to access these like old beacons to escape. Um, and it's very difficult. And I think mainly because there's like no communication tool. Um, you, there's no in-game chat or anything like that. That seems um, weird. Uh, I think maybe because if there was, it might be too uh, overwhelming. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm sure they probably, and that's probably one of the reasons this beta is existing and it's, you know, for so long and it's free is because they're trying to balance a lot of that. Um, there was only two situations in all of my matches where we were able to defeat uh, the enemy um, in that uh, it, it seemed like, I don't want to say the enemy gave up, but it almost seemed like they didn't know what they were doing. Uh, like there was like mm. four of us on the time machine thing uh, activating it and he could have just came over and like knocked us off, uh, but he just didn't. Um, and so uh, it, it's one of those things where at any given point in time, one person cannot take on um, the, the, the enemy. They're just way too powerful. Um, you're like a bug to them. Uh, now you can uh, find enough energy in the world to temporarily transform into a hero. Um, you don't actually change. I mean, I guess sometimes you do depending on the ability, uh, but like, Oh, you'll like put on uh, Goku's, uh, gi, um, and you'll look like Goku and you'll be able to fight like him. But you're and not it's very playing as Goku. No, you're not. You're, you're someone else. You're a person and you, you temporarily can take on their powers. Um, and you can do like a Kamehameha wave, uh, or you can, um, temporarily change into, um, Tien, ability and use like a like a a solar flare to blind the enemy and stuff like that you can take on some of their abilities but you don't actually transform into them um um hmm. i don't know i need to play more of it but i, I like i really almost want to play with someone else so there's some some well, form of communication because there's just no when there's no teamwork going on there is no help of you yeah. defeating the enemy what's up Brian? so you're saying you want to play with someone like in our discord so you can use discord chat yeah okay. Nothing. I, okay. I'm sure there are, you know, nerds like Jager who would probably play in this, right? <laughs> probably. But but I did enjoy what I played of it. It, it, it is pretty fun flying around the world, uh, you know, these Dragon Ball Z inspired worlds, um, uh, you know, trying to hide uh, from the uh, the enemy. Like when they're get you can you, you, you get sound and stuff when they get close to you. Uh, and so, you know, they're near they, you. Try I'm, and I'm hide assuming from them. the enemies are like. Dragon Ball Z villains like Cell. Oh, yeah, it's it's it's, and... it's yeah. Cell, Boo, and Frieza are the three. And they're, they're all the ones that have forms that right, can right, like right. literally transform into like other versions. And once they're in their final form, like you're like fucked if you aren't like almost ready to get out uh, they because they are so much more freeze... powerful. They got that Frieza form that looks like an the... xenomorph. They start playing the music. The oh no, dude, for Get sure, like it gets here, it gets more intense as they transform into each level, and it gives you an alert, like oh they've it's similar to evolve, like oh they've leveled up, um, and and you know the the music gets more intense, and yeah, they just they just become ridiculously powerful. That's this cool. is Ooh. this is Dips, the, footage, the developer behind Xenoverse, right? I have no idea. Maybe sure. Go okay. with that. And Nick, it's called That's Dragon right. Ball: The Breakers. The Breakers. That's a weird name. Uh, not entirely surprising. Um, okay. Uh, I also just want to quickly mention that I played a buck ton more Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. I'm trying to. I think I'm on track to finish that game in the next. I'm trying to do like a hunt today. Who are I you? Think I who are you? Uh, st- I who did you a Raj- time out on the other day? A, Ra- a Rajong. Rajong the other day. Uh, it's uh, the only. Uh. It's the only monster I fought. Um, that has that. Usually I, I finish these hunts in like 25 minutes or so. I was fighting that Rajong right up until the timer was about to run out. I got the five minute warning and it didn't even seem to like right after that is when he hit like the weakened state. And I was like, I can do this. And then he fucking one shot at me and I would I had already <laughs> fainted twice. And I was like, I just th- I just wasted an hour. Why didn't time. you capture him? I was dude, I was trying to get to like he, that, that thing is crazy active like trying to get him to like i could he wasn't sitting still long enough for me to like yeah, throw down a trap and not get hit um so i was just like i was like i gotta take a i gotta take him across the finish line with with damage um i even tried running away so that i could like heal myself or equip my trap and like make a plan and he just kept Thought following me being... everywhere yeah oh, i mean he's a, he's an invader but yeah he's an, uh... he's an asshole but yeah, no, I'm sure. I'm on track to I I'm a master rank five now, and I think when I hit six, technically the uh, the camp like the story the campaign is done. Yeah. Um, 
from what I can tell. And but there's yeah. a new update that came out today, but yeah, you know, I saw we'll talk that. about that some other time. For sure, for sure. We don't want to bore Chris Davis with more Monster Hunter talk. Anyways, uh, let's move right along to the news. Not a ton to mention this week, and to be honest, this first one, I can already tell I'm going to regret bringing up. Um, probably, but I just wanted to kind of gauge your uh, y'all's thoughts on HBO dropped a trailer for The Last of Us show, like a full-blown trailer oh, uh, yeah. and all that I'll jazz. That. Why, why would you regret bringing that up, Nick? I don't know. Yeah. I always kind of regret bringing up The Last of Us. And I, I always kind of like anticipate Brad being like, what is there to talk about? It's just a trailer for a show we know nothing about. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I don't own HBO, but I might be willing to sub for it because that looks pretty good. Go ahead, Brad. I mean, what, what are you going to say? Sorry. Nothing. I did, I did, I did. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Get me out of your head. I'm not actually. You're like predicting you're, things I'm going to say about it. this. You're living in my head rent free, Brad. <laughs> when it comes to The Last of Us, apparently. Um, I'm, I'm more remember, I like The like, Last of Us. <laughs> I, I hate when you, us. you do this about certain fr- franchises. Yes. Yes, Both Last of Us games made my top 10 lists. Dude, I like certain, The Last of Us. I know. No, 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 no. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> you tend to be a little more cynical about like trailers for show, for things like this. I don't know. Why? What are we talking about? I, yeah, I don't. Okay, okay. No, I got something for you. I the, the the part where there was writing on the wall was so video gamey. I don't think that's ever worked on a show or movie. Don't I fucking do that. Knew it. I Just fucking don't do knew it. it. Don't do the writing on the wall. That it's, leave that in video <laughs> games. That's absurd. <laughs> Um, but I'm otherwise, it, it looked like you know, the last of time we've we've talked about this topic before. I mean, the trailer is not changed my opinion on you know wanting an original story versus whatever right so we don't need to rehash that well it's weird i I do want to point out that one i I mean obviously if you follow me i i'm very i very much enjoyed this trailer but i do want to point out that i think it's interesting because the trailer does a pretty good job in my opinion of walking the line between being incredibly familiar like there are like literal moments where I'm like, I know what that's probably referring to. I know what that probably is. And also st- drip feeding us things that like don't look familiar. and make me go, okay, I can see this is probably going to go show us some things or do some things mm-hmm. that, I didn't really... that are different. What like is, what? What is... what is like for, like for one, they showed, they showed like the, the, the crashed plane um, scene and it looks like, it looks like Bill traps someone in like a pit, um, which kind of implies that Bill is living in a completely different kind of place than he is in the game. Um, it seems like I, I don't know, but like it seems like they're doing a few different things. Like the fact that Bill exists means they're obviously sticking pretty close. Like the we know, yeah, what we, kind of we know. I mean, there's some be. stuff that's very seems like straight from the game, right? Uh, but yeah, like there's very, very, very recognizable things. Like I'm pretty sure there's a there's a tease of. Um, uh, when Ellie is captured in the winter time, like there's two scenes in particular that we go, I am pretty sure I know what that is. There's the, there's the, the clicker walking around in like the, uh, the, the skyscraper. You even get the shot of like the skyscrapers in the town and the city that are like kind of falling, uh, leaning against each other, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, and that is it going to be opening, weird when there's like, it's so, well, I don't They showed some stuff from left behind, which I thought was, it, nice. it, yeah, I, mean, I yeah. knew we were going to get that stuff, but it was. But it seems like we're getting all of it. Is this is is this a mini series or is that's my no. question? I mean, I mean, like, what is season two? Of this? It as such, they haven't pitched it as such. They have pitched it as a new series, and it. You know, I, I'm think like I'm obviously the closest analog I'm going to have is I'm thinking about like when they brought Dexter back. It was very much from the moment they announced it. It was like it's a mini series. It's this is an isolated thing. They haven't said any such yeah. thing. And they're obviously well, they putting a lot of money into this. I wouldn't be surprised if what we get here is very much the first Last of Us and Left Behind, and then they maybe spin that off and do some just completely new content yeah. with the characters. Which would be I, I cool, say, but I, there's a canon probably that they have to follow, right? They can't to an just... Extent. I mean, I mean there's here's plenty the of time seen, in between the first game and the second there one. There is, there is, but it all has to be like approved, right? Because Neil Druckmann's involved. Yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah. The, the, but here's the 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 game spans a journey across an entire year, 
you you don't see months of that game, so like there's room right. in there for original stories. I think that'd be really yeah, good. And I'm I, and I'm sure they they're they're gonna do that, especially when you want to stretch what it, they they're gonna hey. stretch it out into a ten hour series. Sure, but but yeah. I'm just saying like you there's shots of Left Behind, there's shots of Winter. Like it's that seems like it's they're covering a lot of that ground. I mean, in a season. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I somebody pointed out to me or somebody somebody said something that they they were like you know oh you know because obviously everybody, everybody talks about the last of us 2 and they're like oh well you know they're not gonna kill off joel like they did in the last of us 2 uh because they don't want to throw away spoilers. pedro pascal sorry spoilers i apologize uh <laughs> but like you know they don't want to throw away pedro pascal which is obviously the face of the show kind of right now and it's like have you watched Game of Thrones? Sean Bean was the face of Game of Thrones for a whole season, and then he was gone. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think they have any problem. I don't. Th- I don't even think that's a. a, a you know. Pedro Pascal was in Game of Thrones too. Yeah, it's for like all of them. season <laughs> two. I mean, what I don't think is going to happen is that season two is going to be the Last of Us two. There's no you know, fucking ways. So I don't think you need to worry about that anytime soon. There are also points. Um, in the original game, that could also be a nice season ender. Somebody, I, I actually like this idea. Somebody pointed out that like Joel getting attacked and falling and impaling himself in the, which kind of precedes what happens in the winter, could be a nice like season ender. Um, you can't then, get though, right? Then there's a because kind of trailer so much of like modern television drama are about like these big cliffhangers, and if you just leave off on a moment that is not. Is just in the middle of the game. There's not actually a cliffhanger anymore. Right, right. Because here's, you just know. I, I do. I do. One. I do think this show is going to span multiple seasons, and it's probably going to go to some original places, and it's going to branch off maybe from the last was two, at least to some degree. Um, but I do think this first season is probably going to be pretty faithful, if for no other reason than this is going to be the entry point for tons of new people who have never seen the Last of Us, never played the Last of Us, and that that core story they tell in that first game, I think is pretty important to getting people in. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think they want people to experience that same story. If this is their first exposure to it, where they go from there is anybody's guess. I do think the, if, if this show is a success and they're going to do multiple seasons. Yeah. I think the last of us two is eventually going to happen in some form. Um, but like y'all pointed out, there are, years between the last of us part one and last of us part two where there are plenty of stories that could be told that are completely original and i hope they get to those i hope they tell well, we've certainly but I, we certainly I don't talked think... a lot about the nitty-gritty do you think this looks good do y'all think this yeah, looks yeah. good i think this yeah. looks excellent i mean first of all i i think i think uh now that we've seen some shots of pedro pascal and bella ramsey playing joel and ellie i'm i'm very very excited to see those two characters those two actors playing these two characters uh, specifically. Uh, I'm also I th- really. I think we didn't get to see a lot of act. I mean, this was this was like this a, a teaser. stylized it was teaser, so it's hard yeah. to get a sense of actual quality from this. I think so, but right. I'm interested. I mean, I'm curious. Um, and yeah, and uh, I also am really interested in um, Bill's portrayal. I mean, I don't think Bill's going to be in it for very long, but the fact that he's played According by, to um, IMDb, he's Ron in Swanson. nine episodes. What? Really? Yep. Wow. Wait, That's they good. already have like episode counts and stuff? Yeah, there's 10 there's 10 episodes in this season. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, I, I, I take that as a grain of salt. I don't know. I mean, what you I'm just tell you this. Out. Is this soon? Uh, it just says 2023 right now. 2023. And I, I, hmm. I really wish they had been more specific and at least given us like like a quarter like cuz when you say 2023, it could mean December of next year. Who the fuck knows? Um, but uh, I, you know, having come off, obviously coming off of Dexter when it was announced and how closely I was following that and seeing how details were coming out and following IMDb and stuff, a lot of these things turn out to be very accurate. So, I mean, not all of them, obviously, and that could just be someone guessing about the episode count that he's in, but a lot people who like pick through interviews and shit can find these little details and flesh that stuff out. And it, a lot of it turns out to be to be true. Um, I, anyways, I just wanted I just wanted to bring it up because you know I'm pretty yeah. hyped for it. I, I really mm. like that they they cast Merle Dandridge in there, and uh, as Marlene, that that is a very good yeah, choice. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, she is the actress who plays Marlene in the game too, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, well, she's also uh, Alex from Half Life Two. Really? Yeah, I had no idea. 
Yeah. That's cool. I never knew that. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty into it. I'm pretty into this. It was a pretty good trailer. Um, you know, the one thing they haven't said yet, if they're going to bring, if they're going to use uh, Gustavo's, I can't say, I don't remember, how, I don't remember his last name. Sir, the composer who does the music for The Last of Us. Severolo? Am I losing yeah, my mind? Probably. It's something but, like that. I can't remember. I wouldn't he, be surprised. His, his sound that he's created for the game is very, very, very iconic. And I don't think they've... Big Wazoo in chat says he is doing the music. I mean, I would be shocked if he wasn't. And they didn't use his music in the trailer. They picked, a, you know, a different song, which was a good song. But obviously it wasn't Gustavo's music. But, um... I don't know how to okay, pronounce people in chat, people, pasting in chat. People in chat are saying Gustavo is doing the soundtrack. And not surprising. I just... I hadn't seen it officially announced anywhere. But that's, that's also really good news. Anyways... Um, I, I don't know if we, how much we want to talk about this next thing, but it happened today, so I figured we'd at least mention it. Um, Google officially announced that they are shuttering Stadia. Stadia is dead, did not live up to their expectations, and instead of pretending like it's, you know, taking off or a thing that's successful, they're just, they're nixing it. Um, and I don't know, I guess I just wanted to get y'all's reactions to it. What do you, what do you, how do y'all feel? I mean, I don't think any of us here were particularly thrilled about Stadia. I mean, it's, um, it's a, it's a concept for a platform that's about 10 years ahead of the actual infrastructure of its consumer base. Yeah. Um, the uh, internet, uh, yeah. internet yeah. access yeah. in this country, let alone anywhere in the world is nowhere near where it needs to be for Stadia to have been a successful product. Uh, yeah, I I think we're on the same even, page there. Even I like that's something I've preached since it came out. I, I played it very early on. Yeah, even I with my quote Odyssey, very good. Yeah, I played a lot of Odyssey on it with my very good in quotations internet. I did not have the best experience with it, yeah. and I think it's one of those things where I agree with Chris. It's just too early. Like look look at the Virtual Boy. Uh, that thing was a piece of shit. Uh, but now we have plenty of VR that's fantastic. It's just one of yeah. those things where yes, in concept it makes sense, but like Chris said especially in other parts of the world where the internet is fucking horrible, especially in parts of this country. The internet is horrible. Um, it just, it doesn't make sense at scale. Like it, it the right. infrastructure to ma to maintain this is so much for how few people are going to get a great experience from it. Um, I, yeah, I, I, 10 years might even be too soon. Chris Davis. I don't, yeah. yeah. Um, I, but I eventually think it's, it's mm -hmm. I think it's too soon to like implement it. The way, they just, did it poorly. That's yeah. why it, it feels like it's far off. I mean, like the way like xCloud works, right? That's fine. It's like supplemental and like that stuff is cool. You can play your Xbox games, your Game Pass your, games your on your phone, basket. on your Steam Deck or whatever. You know, like you, you can just stream your game sometimes. Yeah. You know, well, that's... The, whole, the whole point of this, Brad, is the fact that you're supposed to be able to, hey, I don't have um, an Xbox. I don't have um, a, a great computer. I have a Chromebook uh, and an internet access. I should quote be able to play the game. That's the whole point. Is your sh a more powerful machine is playing the game and just streaming it to you, so you can get a better experience. That's the concept. I mean, that's why you played through a Chrome browser. Um, yeah, that was yeah. what it was supposed to be. Um, it's just the the infrastructure isn't there for that. And I do think when we do get to that point, however far off it is, people are going to point to Stadia as like. Kind of like people point to, the, like you said, people point to the, uh, what did you, was it the Vir power Virtual board? Boy. The Virtual Boy, yeah, yeah. People are going to point to the Virtual Boy and, and talk about that in terms of, you know, giving us a glimpse of the future. And people are going to point to Stadia in the same way and talk yeah. about this. And one thing I thought was surprising, though, as part of this announcement that they're canceling it, is they're going to be issuing refunds for it? For mm -hmm. everything. Which yeah. hardware Every and software. What a colossal, like, fuck up. Yeah, like I mean, people yeah, I mean, bought games and hardware, like, and it's just gone. Yeah, I no, mean, it's not like I, Google I mean, can't afford the refunds. Yeah, I just, I, I'm not used to a company. Usually, I figured this would just be like, well, if you bought into it, sorry. I, I was totally not expecting them to. I mean, it, they needed to do the right thing, and they did it. I'm just genuinely shocked because that almost never happens. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's, so yeah. The one silver lining of this whole thing is that yeah they're they're doing refunds for hardware and software. I mean that's you yeah. kind of have to otherwise you're you're going to face a lot hey, of angry people. If if they are, if they ever want to take a stab at doing this again in the future, I think they realize they have to do this cuz like say t like 10 years down the road the infrastructure is better and it is there and we are starting to talk about this. 
nothing. The only thing that would be stopping them from trying again would be the them people pointing at them and saying, "You didn't give us refunds for the fucking last one." But like, this is buying this is buying goodwill so that when they do turn around and try this again, people are willing to buy back into it. Uh, and which mathematically is, you know, it's speaking, a, it's probably not that big an amount. It's a drop of in the bucket to expect. Yeah, like it's in, in comparison, to actually, how much you know money they were throwing at publishers? Like they were throwing ten to. 10, 20, 30 million dollars at publishers just to get them to not get exclusive games, but to have their games appear on Stadia. Yeah, like, Dilla Quarry was supposed to be a Stadia exclusive. Yeah. And then, and the, you know what? That was maybe the, like, the earliest sign that this was coming. Like, when they made the shift to, to uh, PS5, I'm wondering if they already knew the writing was on the wall and, like, this was just, well... You know, it was always shitty. Shift. None of this is surprising. The tech, I no, mean, oh, the, the concept is fine. They're just, they were just really bad at it. Yeah. yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay. Um, X cloud's cool. <laughs> X cloud is cool. Okay. Uh, guys, like I said, at the beginning of the show, it's going to be a short show. We're not doing a break. We're just rolling right through to the end. Um, but I'm going to get this episode out pretty quick as a result. So, uh, it is time to wrap up at the four player minute. Uh, Brad, would you like to start us off? Uh, well, my four player minute for this week is let me tell you about a game that y'all probably don't care about, but it's on my mind. Um, this week was saw the release of Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero, which yeah. is a long running Falcom series, which Chris Davis knows all about, apparently. <laughs> uh, it goes all the way back He's to like Trails in the Sky, and and they've been putting out they're sort of like different arcs to like this series, but they actually are all connected. The modern, well, the, the, the modern series that we got here in the West localizes trails of cold steel, which maybe you've heard of, but that's the same series as trails in the sky. Well, there, there was like an arc in between that never got localized in the West. That's, uh, which starts with trails of zero and trails of azure which i think is also getting localized next year and it's sort of like this in-between series that we never got but even though it's all part of like a, a same connected story characters and this show up in trails of cold still later you know and characters that were in trails in the sky that arc those games show up in this and i'm not like i have not played most of the games in the series in fact i've only played about half of trails in the sky but it, it's a it's a game and series that i've always felt really fond of um, not the series, but like that game and, but it, it felt really old when I got it. It was when it first came out on PSP or in the West and it just felt like a little old. This one is a game from 2010 and it still feels old, but like, I've always been curious about the series, but trails of cold still, I've always heard they're like kind of really long and bloated and, and I just, I don't want to play that kind of game. And I, I hear like, this isn't quite as like bloated as those. And like, it's a pretty good point to like jump in because i've as much as i'd like to tell myself that i'm going to go back and play three trails in the sky games i'm probably not going to and this is like from what i understand like a good point to kind of jump in because this game and the game that follows it are supposed to be like really good jrpgs so um but the thing is i'm not talking about it today because i did not buy it and the funny thing is is I was almost shocked because I, I I was I was looking into it and I was curious and I'm like oh like this sound like dude I should totally play this I'm just gonna play this I'm gonna talk about it on the podcast that's cool that was my thought and then I realized oh it costs money wait this isn't on Game Pass oh I I didn't rent this from GameFly I have to like buy this video game that feels gross yeah. and i didn't i didn't <laughs> and i realized i took a step back and i'm like wow video games are weird now because i got turned off when i realized i had to just pay for a video game to play it because you know there's like subscriptions and stuff and i feel like things That's are different now shift. and i'm like well maybe i'm not gonna talk about it i i guess i need to like go to a store or something or like spend like actual like i think it's like 40 bucks or something like i'm not gonna do that that's crazy i don't do that anymore <laughs> i bought one game this year i think it's elden ring mo oh, maybe triangle strategy um like you that's know wild. full price really? expensive game um no actually even triangle strategy i got on like a, a a price glitch for like 45 bucks when it came out 
but um yeah so i don't know i'm still very curious about this game trails from zero um i'm probably gonna play it but like i gotta figure out i think i'm gonna rent it from gamefly or something because i don't i'm not just gonna pay a bunch of money for a video game that's weird um yeah that's the other thing the new that new monkey island game came out and like it's getting really good reviews and i'm like oh okay yeah yeah i'll play some monkey island talk about it on the podcast and i i boot up game pass and i'm like wait why is this not on game pass that's strange well, how am i supposed to play this is it on playstation plus or something Brad, are you gonna play scorn because it's on game pass i mean there, no i mean just because i think that game looks stupid but you know there, there's oh. a lot of stuff <laughs> i don't mean to offend your taste it's just not really my taste um so yeah no I, i'm not gonna play that i don't think um and uh yeah just, just oh, strange your strange world game pass i i i, I no, there's a lot of stuff on Game Plus that I don't I don't pay. There's like so much. I just don't have the time. But, you know, I, I would have played this and, you know, like Monkey Island and maybe some other things if those were on there. It's just weird that they're not, right? Isn't yeah, Microsoft yeah. supposed to get everything on the Game Pass? Damn it. You'd think. So, yeah. yeah. Think. Uh, just what I'm thinking. Then I think Wild Hearts looks pretty cool. Uh, not it Sayonara does. Wild Hearts. Which, Wild can Hearts. you call your game Wild Hearts when there's a game called Sayonara Wild Hearts? That seems weird. They're probably going to change the title a little bit, but um, I think it looks cool. Uh, watch the trailer. It's a hunting game. I can speak for that. I would, had no, I had no expectations or thoughts about this game. I watched the trailer on Brad's recommendation, and now I'm pretty hyped. Looks pretty cool. That's all. All right, Chris Davis. Uh, I'll be real quick with mine. My my final thought this week is that I'm kind of so it. A VR game came out uh, today, a VR game I've been keeping my eye on called Bone Lab. It's from the uh, Stress Level Zero, the developers behind Bone Works. Yeah, um, I was about to say, this sounds like Bone Works. And I, yeah. Didn't that game, like, wasn't that game not great? Uh, it wasn't not great, but it wasn't terrible. That's the one that gave, that made Nolan get, like nauseous, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't play Bone Works. Yeah, I, I mean, it I had to It was a very popular too. game. Yeah, but uh, they, they just released their pseudo sequel. Um, they've been putting out some trailers that look really fucking cool. Um, half of it's kind of like a, a physics sandbox thing again, but there's also this overarching campaign story thing that's uh, based on uh, using your VR headset to go into different bodies, and each body has a special ability um, that that allows you to you know be nimble or do more damage or stuff like that or things like that uh it looks kind of cool um and i have haven't played a vr game in a very fucking long time and yeah know, i mean nobody, kind of nobody has similar, but, well except me but that's because the quest to that lifestyle i guess is just different but I, I i just got a new head strap today to make it way more comfy it's pretty cool but yeah, there's a, I mean, I, I started looking at it and I realized that, you know, my Steam, and my Valve Index is, you know, covered in dust right now. And the the Leviathan, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, the the endor- the Valve endorsed Leviathan uh, mod for Half-Life Alex is coming out. East Fire 2 is coming out in November. You know what? Maybe I should just start dusting this off and maybe start experimenting. I still want to play Moss 2 before the end of the year. You should. I mean, I really not? liked Moss and, you know. I mean, you got a quest too, right? No, I have a, I have a, oh my a God, quest. I don't even remember which model. No, I don't have a quest. I have a, oh, a, a Rift. A Rift S. I have a Rift S. Thank you, Nolan. I'm sure that works too. <laughs> Y'all just oh, yeah. play your, your VR games. They're cool. <laughs> I know. I still want to play. I still cool. want to finish The Walking Dead. Uh, I just still want to play Asgard's just... Wrath. Oh my God! You're right. You're right, Brad. Fuck. Plug it in and play, play some VR, VR games. games. VR games are tight as hell, and there's like three of them that I already own that I want to play. Fuck. Yeah, I, I've been wanting to play Saints and Sinners, but I haven't. Uh, I didn't buy it yet. Saints, so Saints and Sinners is so good. Well, it, isn't <sighs> the new chapter coming out pretty soon? Yeah, but I mean, isn't that for like the PlayStation VR two exclusive? I don't fucking know. I think it's exclusive. I, mean, I, I think it's exclusive, dude. Because I don't know, but I don't know. Somebody look it up. Anyways, you're right. Yeah. I need to play my VR. I need to play. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna play some VR games before this year is fucking over. All right, All right. Uh, Nolan. 
Oh, sorry. Do you have more? Do you have more? I was gonna say, I'm, I'm taking a four day weekend, so I might as well finally invest the time in it. So hell yeah. Also, if, if you, I also do highly recommend Asgard's Wrath. That game is pretty fucking cool. I remember that um, one that you talked about on the podcast one time. Yeah. And it's one of those games that's like, this is so fucking cool, but it also seems really intimidating because it's apparently a very long it's like playing it's like if somebody was like you should play this 60 hour assassin's creed game but you have to play it in vr it's like that um oh okay but, now i remember this game yeah the the problem i have with the norse mythology well it's it's not Nor- my problem isn't with norse mythology the problem is, is that i think this is an oculus exclusive game and it is. It, it's not steam vr so i'll have to figure out how yeah. to do the jailbreak thing anyways vr is pretty cool uh nolan and y'all got some 10 minute four player minute final thoughts shit's going on all yeah, right so my, my four player final minute thought starts now um i reinstalled cyberpunk 2077 did you watch um, the anime uh no so it's it's on my people to do. say I it's, heard it's really fucking good sick yeah people it's are like raving bit. about it are you there's supposed to watch that before hype. you play the game i'm confused no, I don't really get oh it. you don't need to there's, what the fuck there's are you talking a- about nick the game's existed forever yeah, well, I know, but so, I didn't know if it was like a prequel or what. Whatever. No. Sorry, Nolan. Go ahead. There's been a whole lot of hype um, around the game. Apparently, you know, it's a, a no man's sky of sorts where it's actually very good now. A lot of up, up, updates have made it actually very playable. Honestly, I did enjoy the time I spent with it when I played it. So I'm pretty excited. Like I said, I redownloaded it. I'm planning on watching the anime and getting back into that. So kind of excited. Um, obviously, that's gonna you know take time it's, away. It's, from it's having that games. Witcher effect. Where like yeah. everybody's playing cyberpunk now because they watched the show and they liked it. Exactly. I have an important question. Mm-hmm. If if I were to play Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven this year and it was awesome, could I put it on my top ten? <laughs> no, no. You could put it well, in like the the category of like games from another year or whatever. Yeah, or... yeah. Tomorrow have, I'm sending out the game of that. the year email. I, I'm <gasps> we're, gonna t- we're gonna talk about stuff. Tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, the other thing is just, yeah, I've been playing so many little games on my Steam Deck, you know, Dome Keeper, uh, Minor Dig Deep, uh, Binding of Isaac. Uh, I'm just, I've been really enjoying that. It's very convenient to uh, play the games that I normally would be playing on my computer if I need to, like, do something downstairs uh, or whatever. So I've been enjoying it, that. It, makes, it lets you be untethered. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. You know, you Cyberpunk 2077 is Steam Deck playable i don't think it's verified but it's playable and i heard it for the most part oh i don't own it i don't own it on steam though i have it on god oh gotcha um the mod scene for for cyberpunk has become kind of incredible i saw a mod yesterday in which they figured out how to make flying vehicles like vehicles that will convert themselves to fly animated and all that that's pretty cool um so my final thought uh, several quick mentions. I, I just want to point out, you, Chris Davis was talking about VR. There, and this is still kind of in uh, uh, development, so I'm going to probably wait until it's ready for prime time. But apparently this Half-Life 2 mod lets you play the entire game in VR a la Half-Life Alex is pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, and when that's done, like when that's officially like 1.0, uh, I fully expect I'll be diving into that because that sounds amazing. Um Two, uh, the Last of Us show. Obviously, we talked about it earlier. I'm just, I like finally getting a look at that trailer. Man, I'm so fucking excited. Um, that's and having just played part one, that's that story. Quite honestly, that story just means a lot to me. I, I, I love those characters. I love, I love that story. It's one of those games I think I can probably play endlessly and never really get tired of it. And I'm so excited to see this converted to a different medium, um, and see different interpretations of these characters. And uh, also just kind of excited that a lot of people who have never experienced it. I have a coworker who doesn't play video games, but she appreciates like the same kinds of stories and media and stuff. And I was like, you should watch the trailer for this. And she's like, oh, my God, this looks cool. And she knows nothing about The Last of Us. And I'm just like excited. That there's going to be more people like that who are this is going to be their window into this uh, franchise. And I'm hoping it delivers because if they can deliver that same story, um, in a way that is as impactful as it was playing the game, I think a lot of people are going to be very, uh, are in for a treat. And that's pretty cool. And it's just another excuse to talk about The Last of Us with, you know, n- new people you haven't talked about with before. Um, so I, that's I just like your really four-player like... minute is another excuse to talk about The Last of Us when we talked about it in the news. 
Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, Brad. Do you have some place to be? It's 10:22. I, mean, I, I, I will say that my favorite part of that trailer was when Joel said, "Ellie, we really are the last mm-hmm. of us." Mm-hmm. I'm glad they yeah, got into was, the trailer. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. good. That was a pretty good moment. Yeah. Um, I also just want to quickly mention again, I'm going out of town tomorrow. I'm taking my. This is my first trip taking a Steam Deck with me. So I've loaded up a bunch of shit on it that I want to dabble with. I'm probably getting way ahead of myself in terms of like overestimating how much time I'm actually going to have to play. Uh, well, how long is your uh, flight, Nick? Not long. I mean, I mean, like probably, I'll probably have like three hours to play. And four hours bring a battery then. I did. I got a, I got a thing that uh, I got. A, I got. I got one of those uh, battery packs that's highly recommended for the Steam Deck. You can probably get like three charge full charges out of it. Um, so I'm prepared. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. I'll be playing uh, more Proteus. I'm going to be playing Chernobylite. I'm going to be playing Moon Scars. Uh, oh, I, 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 guys, I don't know if I told you this. I restarted playing Prince of Persia 2008 on that thing. Okay. And let's I, end this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to do that. And I'm also thinking about installing Red Dead 2. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, again, tune in, join us next week and the week after that. We're, no podcast, but we're gonna, we are going to be doing some uh, fun community multiplayer nights, whatever uh, that may be. So keep an eye on Twitter, keep an eye on 4playernetwork.com, we'll, and keep an eye on Discord. We'll make sure everybody's aware of what the plans are. Um, but the podcast will return on October 20th. Um, so tune in for that. Or maybe and, before that. Uh, or maybe before that. I don't fucking know. Now Brad's shaking his head. He's Brad's fucking with no, me. No, I'm just like, on. that wasn't a head shake. It was a blah. Oh, okay. Or maybe, maybe, maybe that'll happen. I don't fucking know. Uh, the point is, uh, it may seem like we disappear for a little bit, but we'll be back. We're not disappearing. Why are you telling people that? Podcast. The people who only listen to the podcast are going to be like, what oh, okay, the show? Okay. It's gone. Yeah. Okay. Those people should absolutely tune in on twitch.tv yes. slash four player yes. podcast tune in, next tune Thursday in and, the, yeah. and the, the week after that. Um, and also, of course, I want to extend an invite to everybody out there who listens to join our Discord at discord.gg slash four player. I will, of course, be in there. May not be as active for the next couple of weeks, but it's a great place to get in touch with the community, talk about games, talk about movies, talk about all that stuff. Um, so we'd love to have you there. But in the meantime, be good to each other. Chris Davis is talking, his mic's muted. Good, good. End it, end it. Well, okay. I was going to say, it, the Discord is a great place for people to add Nick and know him on his vacation. I will be turning notifications off. No, you won't. Um, if you do that. But anyways, thanks so much for listening tonight, guys. We'll catch you next time. 4 com is the website. In the meantime, be good to each other, play video games, be safe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Good night. Night. Bye. Bye.